Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Don, by one of the hosts of PTSF. No, this is not an ad. I wish it was. I wish we was getting some money here. But uh, this is just a very quick alert that there will be an issue with the audio at one point of this episode around like 49 minutes. So from 49 to 57, it was an audio issue on my side. We were able to retain some of the audio, so it's going to sound a little clunky. It'll be right back to normal after that around eight minutes of audio. So just kind of bear with it through that. We didn't take it out because we felt like it was an important conversation. Can't wait for you there to episode. I'm here myself through my headphones. Yes, man. Like, I feel real good about this. Pay attention because you are now listening to Permission to Speak Freely. 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 Information from you right now. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm just happy that you started working and you got yourself a gig. I, I, I'll start yeah. off by saying that you got, you got any friends that like always got a new Facebook page that they want you like they want to invite you to that they they want you to like 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 this week you a carpenter next week you got a podcast this week you want me to like this page uh, <laughs> i got friends like that and i don't like that you know what i'm saying that's real quick if you my friend and you know you got a new facebook page every week stop inviting me <laughs> you know what i mean like i don't <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna like your page like i asked y'all to like ptsf Three years ago, and I asked y'all to like shit else. <laughs> like, 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 it's gonna be a long time before I ask y'all. Well, the book club, but <laughs> you see the book. You see how quick that fizzled out, man. You know what I mean? I, I blame the guys for that. But um, Damon ain't with us this week for the listeners. Damon not with us. And if you if you're new to our podcast, you probably don't know this, but we not guest dominated. Like it's normally us. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We got some other, we got some, a couple guests lined up for the next uh, couple episodes too, but it's normally just us just talking and getting ourselves caught up in bullshit because the things we talk about, right? But um, Damon not here. He on vacation. They celebrating his wife's birthday and um, Valentine's Day and all that. And Damon got like two of those Apple um, Vision Pros. I don't know. Like, it's, that's crazy to me. You <laughs> bought two of them. That's that like Master Chief of the Bacon Buddy. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Another thing I think is that without Damon here, this could go real bad. It's a diabolical, you know, connection that we got, Tish and me. Damon is normally like my kind of like uh, voice of reason. You know, even if he not talking, <laughs> I could just look over and say and think like, yo, I know I can't say that shit, you know, but with like <laughs> <laughs> with Tish being retired. She don't really care, and like I don't give up. Yeah, she she told a line all the time anyway, and I, you know I don't really tell a line. So Damon was always kind of like my compass, you know. He always get me back to my true north, man. But he not here this week. But uh, hey, welcome to the new listeners, to the OG listeners that been with us since day one. That know what we do. That know we not always talking like that after school special Navy stuff, and we just sometimes talk about some real life stuff. What up, y'all? We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. It's Black History Month. Go and make some history. You know, that's what I got hey. for this month. <laughs> Teach. Go make some <laughs> Go damn make history. Some history. Yeah. Go make some history. But listen, that that's that's real shit though. Mm. Go make some history. Cause years down the line, who are they who are our kids and our kids' kids gonna be talking about? Yeah. And it's gonna come from us. So yeah. you know, we are the Martins. Yeah, history, but in a different way. History ain't stopping in the, um, in the eighties and the seventies. No. You know, we we go make some history right now, and let's live in that. Oh, and by the way, update your infats. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't heard that <laughs> enough, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I ain't gotta hear that no yeah. more. <laughs> if you ain't heard that enough, they ask me. Somebody asks me. You know, whenever they ask me things, they gotta like explain why they asking me. You know what I mean? That's I, like I guess that's like a part of like being a senior chief. You know what I mean? Like. Like mm-hmm. if, even if they ask you if they if you updated your in, in, they a senior, did you update your MFAS? You know, and they they like senior. I'm only asking you because you know it's a thing, and I just want to make sure. I know you're on top of things, but I just want to make sure you don't miss it. You, you know what I'm saying, senior? <laughs> and I, you know, I'm, I'm like it's cool. You know, I appreciate it. But I used to do that um, at my last command. I used to uh, I was a core commander officer representative, so I go in there and I look at MFAS and I track numbers and stuff. So that's near and dear to my heart. Cause so you used to send out the hit list. I used to send out the hit list to every installation. <laughs> like, hey, we need, by this time, we need the stats. So I'm like, it's never a time when I'm not going to update MFAS. Soon as I see the message, I get it updated. You know what I mean? So, yeah. But they definitely, I'm telling you, anything anybody ever asked me that they think like, like could be like, uh, translated as like micromanagement or like something, they like explain mm-hmm. it. They sing it. <laughs> 
I'm only asking you this. This is like, yo, I'm good. <laughs> like, I need that. Like, I, my brain don't function, you know, correctly all the time. So I need that stuff. You know what I yeah. mean? But we're going to get right to it. For the listeners, we're going to get right to it because I know some of y'all don't give a damn about us and y'all just want to hear about some Navy stuff. And we got some Navy stuff. And then for the, like I said, for the day ones that care about us, we got a couple things. Like I went to my command holiday party. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. But uh, let's get right to this uniform policy that everybody talking about. Teach, did you? Everybody. Did you read this? Of course I did. All right. Listen, there's there's not a whole lot that I'm going to dive into when it comes to like when new Navy policies come out. This one, though, first off, it was all over my timeline. So everybody had their hands in their pockets or whatever. But I had to go through and I had to read it. Even like as soon as I saw that, it was like I saw one of them and I was like, oh, let me go check this out and see what's going on so I can like laugh at them. Right. Like, let me let me be over here on the retirement side. Like, ah, (laughs) but then I was a little bit mad. I was like, damn, there's some good shit. Yeah, and we're going to go through the... I'm going to go through, like, the hits. I ain't about to... The, yeah, the, the big cha- ones. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uniform, the... cha- for the chaplains out there. <laughs> Yo, listen, for the chaplains out we... here that listen to the pod, y'all. <laughs> listen, <laughs> man. Like, y'all got a... You know, y'all got a, a, a small but very important community. We, yeah. We're not about to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Nah. Like, but trust nah, me. No, no, no. We not. We appreciate y'all. Mm-hmm. You know, we, nah. we we definitely appreciate y'all, but we ain't about to get into it. We gonna get into some of the some of the hits, right? So the first one, and I'm gonna go down the list, but we only gonna talk the hits. So the first one is the combo cover, right? So the mm-hmm. female combination cover, the bucket cover is reinstated, optional navy uniform component for female sellers, E1 through O10, right? When we're in service dress and dinner dress uniform. The bucket cover is now also optional for female officers and chief petty officers when wearing service khaki and summer white uniforms. Now, Mm -hmm. the thing that they did note was that the bucket cover will not be available for personal purchase at Navy Exchange Uniform Centers and will need to be privately obtained if desired for wear. So, Tish, um, first off, what's the thoughts on that? You could wear the bucket again. I love it. I love it. And I think a lot of us, a lot of us um, women, we liked our bucket cover. Now, it, that shit was hard to keep, you know, crisp because it would crunch up. It was like super, super hard to keep keep from crunching up or whatever. Uh-huh. But we loved the bucket cover. I enjoyed having a different cover than the guys, even though the the men's color or now is everybody's cover. But it's it's bomb. It looks nice as hell now. I ain't gonna I ain't yeah. gonna take that away from me. It looks nice as hell. It, it's sharp, but I loved the female combo cover though. And I, I think a lot of us had like a connection to the combo cover. Yeah. And so a lot of people never got rid of their combo cover. I've even seen some people. I think it was it it phased out, um, like in 2018, 2019 or something like that. Even after that, I saw people who were still at their retirement ceremony wearing their um, their bucket cover. Yeah. Like still. So a lot of people had an attachment to it. Um, so it's good to see the cover came back. It, it's good to see that they came back. No, they ain't about to be selling that bitch nowhere, though. No, they ain't gonna sell it. So if you old school, like if you if you got the old school cover, then you know that's gonna set you apart. You like the retro. Yeah. That's like the OG mark. Yeah. <laughs> and most people got it, right? Most people kept it because some military items like that, people kind of keep them for nostalgia purposes or they want to put something right. in a shadow box. Or I mean, I don't know if somebody right. have a shadow box big enough to put a whole damn combination cover. But some people do keep all I their do. stuff. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what I figured. I, yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> you know, people shadow yeah, boxes be going one. crazy. But um, mm-hmm. some of the young sellers won't, you know, won't obtain it unless they go to a thrift store or something like that. You know, somebody mm-hmm. that got it. Yeah. But yeah, that's kind of cool. I have no personal connection to it. I'm just happy for the ladies who get to wear whatever it is that they want to wear. All right. So yeah. let's talk about the PTU. Right? No, 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 oh, no. Hold on. on. Let's, on go, let's go. Let's go back. Let's go, let's go back. Let's oh, go tiara? back to the tiara. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, I missed it. I'm sorry. Okay. So listen, I had never heard of the t- the t- tiara, tiara, however you want to say it. I had never heard of it. I never heard of it before. So when I heard that we can wear the tiara, I'm thinking Princess and the Frog Cinderella tiara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm me thinking too. like 
shit bedazzled in crystals. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Gold. We popping out. Yeah. But uh, no, that's not it. it. It looks like a beret cover. It's black. And it, and it goes up into like a, a peak and it has an emblem on the front. So it's not the tear like that we're Nazi thinking shit. about. <laughs> yeah. I really thought, cause like, no lie. I was like, like if, if they had the tiara while I was in every Friday, I would be dressed up just so I can wear the tiara I thought it, every Friday. I thought y'all was going to be looking like y'all doing like a princess birthday or something like that. And that's what I thought too. I thought oh, that's the same wild thing, shit. but it ain't it. That ain't it. Yeah. You know, we have so many uniform components though. And they phase them in and phase them out. And so it's like, I ain't know that. And apparently there was a lot of other people who didn't know too. So I don't feel, I don't feel too ashamed. Like a- but my homegirl, <laughs> my homegirl was at the uniform shop that day. Like the tiaras come in. She thought it was the crown too. Oh. She was like, the tiaras come in. I need three of them. Is it like a bunch of dudes <laughs> that's just trying to think what like ladies would want? <laughs> like, yo, they probably want the tiara. Let's give them the tiara. I don't know. You I'm gonna know, talk about I, that. I'm gonna I talk about know. that. In a second. Yeah, we'll talk I'm about that. Talk about that in a second. <laughs> yo. Uh, <laughs> all right. So PTU, right? Black or navy blue leggings, tights are authorized for optional wear with the physical training shorts and uh, the fitness suit pants. At first, when I read it, like so, just so y'all know, because we're gonna talk about Nav Admins for a little bit. I'm not that good with reading Nav Admins. Like I gotta read them over and over and over again. I need somebody that's better than me to like explain them to me and stuff like that, right? I really got to digest them. When I read this at first, I, I completely missed the whole with shorts and uh, fitness suit pants. And I'm like, damn, like, ladies can just rock leggings at, you know, at, at PT. You know what I mean? And some dudes was like, is it for, you know, both genders? Is it for, you know, and, and it looked like it is. Like, you could throw some, and mm-hmm. for the men, I, you know, I call them I don't call them leggings for the guys, you know. We don't call them tights. Right. We call them compression shorts for the guys. Compression you know shorts. I mean? So uh, <laughs> yeah, we could we could rock them, you know. We could wear them. We could throw some compression sh- uh, pants under our uh, shorts. So. so y'all gotta win. Yeah, that's pretty. If it's a little chilly, you know, you throw that on. Yeah. Pretty cool. That might take away that it's too cold to PT excuse. You know. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's get into another big, another big one, man. Uh, false eyelashes, right? So Listen. female sellers are authorized to wear false eyelashes or eyelash extensions. I, you got, you gonna have to talk to me about what eyelash extensions are. Um, that project a natural appearance and are no longer than fourteen millimeters in length, as measured from the eyelid to the tip of the eyelash. False eyelash color will match the color of natural of the natural eyelash. Uh, eyelash extensions cannot hinder wear or protective eyewear. All right, what's so, happening here? So like false eyelashes versus eyelash extensions. I just kind of look at the false eyelashes like the strip ones. They're a strip and it has like a whole lash on that strip yeah. and you just boop, boop, pop it on there. Uh-huh. Eyelash extensions are like they can attach single a single lash to your lash. Who the fuck? Like, or a cluster. How much time that take? How long that take? It take a little bit. It take a little bit. It's a little bit of time, a little bit of money. (laughs) You gotta do that with a microscope. (laughs) Literally, they tape your eyes and and you know do it. They even have robots that can do it now. Oh, like you put your head in this machine and it like you know cuffs your eyes and then you just sending people out. (laughs) (laughs) The AI bots. But no, but I think this is good though. Because it gives an actual number. Like eyelashes are a big thing now, you know? And so given an actual number, uh-huh. all right, now it's cool because now I don't know if people, go, li- listen, I saw people who was talking about they were going to GSA and order the uh, millimeter rulers. Uh-huh. So yeah, that they like can how be. You even, yeah, like how, <laughs> how you, gonna, you go? Like ain't nobody really going to oppose this, right? Like I think your lashes are out of regs. Yeah. No, they not. Yo, I think I, let me, let me whip my ruler out. Yeah. <laughs> Now is that go at? Because I'm gonna talk about that when we get to this hands in the pocket thing. But like as a as a chief, like am I really gonna whip a ruler out to check like a lady's eyelashes? You know there there's some that probably will. I'll, I'll tell you that. But I mean, the, probably I? the only time that they no, you shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to. Um, and actually, 14 millimeters is actually pretty good. Like it, I wore some long, 14. Right? Yeah. Yeah, the millimeter. Yeah, the fourteen millimeters isn't that long. I had those on the last episode. 
Yeah. The, the biggest ones were 14. Yeah. That's just about as big as I can go. Like people be out here with the flappers on and be looking crazy as hell. Yeah, I said it. Y'all look crazy as hell. Yeah. But it like I like the 14. They look very natural. It looks good. Still look professional. You don't look like you're gonna fly away. It don't look like you're gonna get something stuck in your eyes. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I like it. I like and, it. And, I'm here for and it. Not that long, right? I know you said and it. It's, it's not. Yeah, it's not that long. So, it has a little bit of a dramatic. Not. It's not really dramatic. It's like a classic eyelash. Like yeah. you can tell that you have extensions, but it doesn't give that long mm-hmm. dramatic. I got a blink slow type feel. Yeah, you know your camera just moved like crazy. Your camera just moved. Did crazy. it? Yeah, yeah. I don't know I'm what trying happened. Not- your camera just, your <laughs> camera just ooh, I'm like it's like Exorcist type stuff going on, right? But, oh, it's yeah. I got this new camera. Oh, I, it I moves? got this new camera. It like, y'all. follows you. Yeah, it mo- it auto tracks. Yeah, yeah but you, let me you see. In the same space, like you ain't move. Like what's going I'm on? I'm trying to make sure the <laughs> auto track is off. Hold on, let me see real quick. Nah, I mean, well, I'm gonna keep. We gonna oh, keep yeah, talking. Oh yeah, it is on. Hold on. Yeah, we gonna keep talking. So. Let me take it off. So check it out. So I'm talking to I'm talking to a bunch of dudes. Right. So the reason why I asked about the, the length thing is I'm talking to a bunch of dudes, and the dudes like, oh man, that's a decent size. Some journey's gonna be long, you know. And then when I was talking to my wife, she was like, yeah, 14 millimeters, and they it ain't really all that long, you know. I'm nah, thinking the dudes knew what they was talking. <laughs> like, and, and nah. that's how much we just don't know. Like, man, like we, yeah. we don't know what the hell going on, you know. That's why I don't know who going to do all the uh, you know measuring and all that. All right, so we got officer, hair yeah. gear, captain, insignia. Hey, for the officers that listen to us, shout out. We love y'all. Appreciate y'all. We're going to skip this one, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, you know, get y'all a pod. Man. You know what I mean? Get, get, y'all, <laughs> get y'all a pod. Man. They, there is a pod out there for them, though. Yeah, they, they can go pod, ahead and holler little girl. Yeah, go, she probably going to go and lift on it. Proceedings podcast, man. Well, we, we, yeah. we got some officers that listen to us, uh, too. And then we got some officers going to be guests. But shout out to y'all. We off that. Uh, chaplains, we off that. Shout out to y'all. Uh, the warrant chaplains, officers. Shout out to y'all. A- aerial vehicle pilots, shout out to y'all. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> female t-shirts, right? So yep. um, I really I really don't use that word, but these instructions do. So I quote These them. instructions say it, yeah. All female sellers are authorized to optionally wear t-shirts specifically designed for female bodies with Navy uniforms. Female t-shirts will conform the Navy's requirement. Of course, right? Color, fabric, neck, configuration, stuff like that, right? Intent of the policy is to address express dissatisfaction regarding to require uh, regarding the required wear of male and unisex t-shirts that are not designed to fit female bodies. So do do the ladies, do y'all got like a direct line of communication to the people that write these uniform nav admins? Like Listen. Oh my God. <laughs> like how are y'all dissatisfaction like always? Make it up oh, there, you know what I mean? Listen, I don't know who the female woman, lady, whoever is up there in the Uniform Matters office yeah. that's been there for like the past, what, five years? She, you understood the yeah, assignment because she, she up there working. Yeah, she, pulling her weight, girl. <laughs> she up there working. I'm telling you. Yeah, she pulling, she got this thing down to a science. And every I know she wear lashes. Mm-hmm. You know, she got to be old school because she like the bucket cover. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? She's up there every week with a new NAB admin introducing it. Like, here you go. This is what we need to implement in the new policy. Yeah. You, you watch <laughs> you watch Abbott Elementary? No, I've uh, heard of it, though. I, I, I could imagine her being Ava, the principal from, from, Abbott, from <laughs> Abbott, like having that type of vibe. That, that's just crazy that like, like y'all could like y'all, uh, everything y'all want. Everything. Man, y'all, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's on and popping, and, man. Like it's on and popping. In, in regards to like the t-shirt, like I used to always just go and buy the little boys t-shirt or, or a women's t-shirt. Like I ain't like the men's t-shirt, but w- w- when I did buy the men's t-shirt is because I ran out or something and I had, or I had, I left it and I had to go to the Navy exchange and they don't have the female t-shirt. So I just have to buy a male t-shirt. But I never liked the like we don't wear those. We used to cut the male t shirts. Yeah. I remember back then we used to cut it short because it was so daggum long. So so yeah, yeah, we now it's in it's in writing that we can do it, and I guess that's the first step to get the uniform office to start supplying us 
with the t-shirts so it's, in the it's, in the exchange. It's just not form maybe. fitting. Like yeah, like yeah, it's not. It's it's boxy. It's, it's made to fit y'all. Even the smalls are huge. Oh, okay. So that was, and then you get the bacon neck, you know. So that was a problem. The bacon neck right? going the, on. The fucking. That was a problem. It's a problem, y'all. So the, that the t-shirt fixed. didn't fit. Fucking, she was like, I ain't fit. having it. She's like, yo, I know <laughs> I could get what I want out this. Let's hey, yes. hey, Archie, well, like the way the t-shirt fit. <laughs> like, 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 Listen, retour her. Retour <laughs> her. I, I, I need to know who she is for real. <laughs> like, I, I was excited. Yeah. She did it all for the girls. Yeah. She said, let me <laughs> let me just see how much cash I got with them. Hey, well, like the way the t-shirt fit. Man. Let's see if y'all change that too. <laughs> Uh, so backpacks, right? You could buy a commercially procure a Coyote Brown backpack. They authorize for wear with NW Type Two, Type Three, um, and then they're going to be worn in, a, in accordance with our normal guidelines, right? No logos, you know, same stuff, right? Yeah. Um, those duty backpacks. I'm gonna tell y'all like this: them duty back, they too fucking big. Like it, people packing their whole life in those damn duty backpacks, man. Like, they don't make no damn sense, man. I saw a seller who took up the whole elevator. I took a picture. I, I, never wanted, I asked him if I could take a picture. He said it was cool, but I, I didn't want to share it, man. I, I feel like it was just too crazy to share it, man. It might have blew up the internet, but he took up the whole elevator with his damn backpack. <laughs> like, how long are you about to be on duty, man? You know how to be? What you got? You got your air fryer in there, man? Like, what you got? Um, the rest of this stuff, I'm not going to get it. It's one more thing, right? We know what that is. That's the big thing. Um, but the maternity pilot program, that's, you know, things that's been uh, ongoing. Um, size modernization, ongoing. Female officer, CPO, summer white uniform, ongoing. Uh, f- female service uniform slacks, ongoing. It's somebody that's going to say, hey, y'all didn't talk about hat liners, man. Like, the, the people just don't understand how serious that... We're not going to talk about the hat liners either. <laughs> We're going to get into this personal appearance thing, right? So this is Juliet. Uh, this is not bad, man. It says personal appearance. The restriction on placing hands in pockets while in uniform is rescinded. Sellers are authorized to have hands in their pockets when doing so does not compromise safety nor prohibit the proper rendering of honors and courtesies, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not the one to think I am, brother. <laughs> I will take 20 years of the military and beat your ass. You understand me? That's all the retired chiefs on Facebook right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what's, what's, I mean, what's up with it, Tish? You're a retired chief. Is you, you on that? I mean, I, it really wasn't that big of a deal to me, honestly. I, I thought it was cool. You know, like, okay, they, you can put hands in your pockets now. And I thought it was funny. I saw all of my timeline. Everybody got pictures with their hands in their pockets. You know, it's just the small things. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just one of those small things. It's the small wins. Like, what is... I don't understand how the retirees and the old school Navy is like, see, this is what's wrong with the Navy. Yeah. This is this is what's wrong with the Navy right here. They're uh, they're trying to please people too much, and it's like, oh, it's just putting your hands in pockets. Like, chill. Yeah, two shits. Chill. Two shits. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, I two shits about this. Uh, like, I, I I don't remember the last time I told somebody that they take their hands out their pockets. I don't really even remember like the last time I saw somebody with their hands in their pocket. Like, I just n- none of this registers to me. Period. Like. We could take mm-hmm. our hands out of our pockets. That's like saying that we could use the air fryers, you know, in the barracks. Like, yeah. they, they've been doing shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, I just, I just really don't know. Um, I can't even identify the last time it like struck a nerve with me. You know, maybe you know. I, I believe I have told people before to take their hands out their pockets, but it's mm-hmm. been a while. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we got. I mean, we telling people to take they. We telling people to like wear their hard hats while we. In a yard period, you know, while we on the ship, while we in the shipyard, it's like, hey, put your hard hat on. You know, you got to wear your hard mm-hmm. hat. We telling people right. to take their ball caps off when they on a the mess decks. Like it's other things. We telling people that the bacon neck, you know, can't go down to their belly button. You know what I mean? Like, so it's <laughs> other things that I know for sure that I like. I've been talking about hands and pockets came completely out of nowhere. I think it's just one of those things. Like, okay, let's just make it official. You know what I mean? Like, I like who? Like, I don't know. And I mean, the Navy kind of made like a big deal out of it. I know the Air Force mm-hmm. did it back in 2021. And then um, the Marines, they like, uh, we ain't doing that shit. Like, it just don't look professional as far as military is concerned. As the Marines is kind of like, 
more restrictive with a lot of their uniform policies and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. I, like, I really, it's so, I know some people want to hear us like have a 20 minute kind of like conversation about it, but I don't give mm-hmm. two shits about this policy. Mm-mm. You know, but l- let me tell you though, I bet there's some admiral or something who hates the policy and who's waiting to become the next CNP so he can change that shit back. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, admirals, so don't get too comfortable with your pockets. Admirals, I, I just don't see it. Like, but like, what's going to be the justification? Like, oh yeah, we noticed like sellers been putting their hands in their pockets so we've been having more like mishaps like walking. Mishaps? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that should be your only concern. Yeah. Like until somebody... Like something happens and it's like, oh, well, the cause during the investigation, we found that, you know, the cause of this casualty was because they had their hands in their pockets and they couldn't get it out their pockets fast enough. Yeah. It's probably only been yeah. chiefs correcting people, right? Like, I don't think admirals. Probably. Really yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. For sure. I don't think. For sure. Okay. An admiral will have a 20 minute conversation with you and then go talk to the chief. Like, hey, you know, this motherfucker had his hands in What do you pocket. think about this? <laughs> yeah. Like, the whole time I was talking, I had a really good conversation with uh, Y and two such and such, but the whole time he had his hands in his pockets, chief. Uh, can you, uh, can you go talk to him about you that? You know, there, there might be some out there like that, though. Yeah. There are, there are some very, like, custom, customs and traditions type of people who are just like real sticklers for stuff like that. And then some, I yeah. worked with a captain that was like that before. What, he, like what? he was very old school when it came to like Navy customs and traditions. Like he was very old school. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is like sometimes you just holding down, like even if I did ever hold it down, sometimes you just holding down like a tradition that you just, you kind of, you're bred to hold it down because of your job. Like, Hey, I'm a chief. Yeah. I'm here to like obtain whatever our, rules and mm-hmm. our guidances because that's what's written, right? So I'm going to just say that because right. that's what's written. That's what I'm told to say. But when I go home at night, like I did not remember the seller who had their hands in their pocket type shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that's where the sellers started to like kind of disconnect because it's like, why are they wasting their time telling me about this shit that like they're not like connected with at all? Like it's just, right. it just don't matter. You know what I mean? Get your hands um, out your pocket. Yeah. Hey, hey, so, hey, shit mate. Like, you know, running down on somebody. Like, right. Hey, shit mate. Yo, take your hands up. You know, like real. You know you can't. You know, you know you can't have your hands in your pocket. But like it's like, mm-hmm, you know what I mean. So, so from what I hear, that's how Virginia is. Is that, is that true? Yo, so one time out, like when I was a junior seller, I had my I, I forgot my ball cap. Like I, mm-hmm. I like this was when we could wear our utilities like on like off base and stuff like that. I think I, I think mm-hmm. so. Uh, I forgot my ball cap. I left it on a ship by mistake. I, I forgot where I left it. I forgot, I forgot where I left it. It couldn't have been a ship because I was leaving work. But I was getting in, I, I had to stop at the gas station and I had my hands on my head. You know what I mean? Because we, we don't got no <laughs> the cover. The cover. Right? You, your hands on your head. And I'm <laughs> running to the gas, I'm running to the gas station so I could get whatever I needed to get. This dude pulls up, even a first class or a chief, because this is back when first classes used to correct you too. This is back in the days. Mm-hmm. Back in the days when first class used to correct you. <laughs> so, so, so I put my, my uh, you know, and then he pulls up and he stops me from running into the gas station to like check me about not having a cover. You know what I'm saying? And this was in Norfolk. This is in Virginia. So he, mm-hmm. he it like, and I'm like, yo, like he like, hey, shit, mate, come here. I'm like, damn, man. Right. You know, he in the car, he didn't even get out the car. And and he was talking to me. He was in the driver's seat. He was talking to me through the passenger window. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he checked me. He checked me about not having a ball cap. And I'm in my head. I'm like, yo, dude, if you let me go in the store, I'm not going to need a ball cap there. Then when I get out, you know? So I got checked right there about that. I've been checked by an officer before about having my headphones on, on base, like both the over the mm-hmm. air zones, both. He like, it wasn't really that I had the headphones on that he checked me, but I ain't salute him. I was in uniform oh. too. I was in uniform. This is when Beast Spot Dre first came out. I was in uniform. Like, <laughs> uh, like totally wrong, right? Uh, but like, he was like, hey, he was, a, he was like, Edson, you know what I mean? But back when, like, mm-hmm. I'm like an E2 or something, like, like Edson, you know what I'm saying? So, so he was like, hey, come here, you know what I mean? So he calls me, we're in the middle of the crosswalk, man. Like, you got to check me in the middle of the crosswalk, man. You wow. know, he's like, he started asking me, like, you know, they start, Ask you what command you from? What this command? Real checking. This is a real checking. Like <laughs> what command yeah. you at? What, who's your chief? I don't know if you ever heard uh, Judge Mathis talking to uh, Wendy Williams. 
this is a good old fashioned check in. You know what I mean? <laughs> he said, I'm giving you a good old fashioned check in. That's what you get today. So that's what he gave me, though, right? So he stops me, he gave me this good old fashioned check in. And then he hit me with, so you already checked me, man. Why you want to know what command I'm from, man? What shit I'm from? Right. Period. So, you know what I mean? So, uh, I think they do that just to have you scared for like a week. Like, yo, did they find out? Did you know they what I mean? Did they find out? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because my face, it, back in them days when I was a young sailor, back in them days, if you was checking me, my face kind of lets you know, like, I hear you, but like, I really don't, you know, care. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> in those days, like, I can't lie. Like, it's like, I hear you. And then, like I said, we, I wish we had Damon here because he, he probably would have stopped me. <laughs> but it's like, yo, I hear you, but I can give two shits. Like, you know, you're an officer. I'm going to shut up. I respect that. And I'm going to keep it moving. But I like, I got to like, let them know I'm still a man. Like, that's like how my ego works. Yeah. Right? But, um, yeah. Yeah. And that was all Norfolk. And so and after Norfolk, I went to Annapolis and I thought it was going to be crazy because that's where the, uh, you know, that's where the academy is. But it wasn't, it wasn't mm-hmm. like that. Even when I went to the Navy Yard, I was like, even as a chief, I'm like, oh, Navy Yard about to be crazy. Like, Right. You know, and, and, no, Norfolk was the the most the, 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 yeah, <laughs> the tightest, you know. Um, but I don't know. It's not really like that. It's not like that anymore. I don't think oh, really? I don't think anywhere is I don't I don't think anybody's focused on like stopping sellers in the middle of the street and checking them anymore. You know what I mean? Mm. I had a home I had a homie check somebody at the barbershop before, yo. He was getting his hair cut. Right. Dude came in a barbershop with the, you know, something uniform issue. You know what I mean? I forgot what it mm. was. And he said he checked him. <laughs> this is in San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> he gave him a good old fashioned check. I'm like, yo, yeah. I'm like, yo you, I like, I was like, did you have your civilians on? He's like, yeah. I'm like, did you have to show him like your CAC or something? Like, yeah, tell him like, yo, I'm a Navy right. chief. <laughs> like, I'm a Navy chief, man. You can just shit. No, right. right. But I think at that time he was a first class. But, um, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so I, I don't know, Teach. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's kind of normal here in Norfolk. In, yeah. In, in Norfolk now. But yeah, so that's the uniform stuff. Like I said, I'm not too attached to this whole um, thing about the pockets. Hands in the pockets. Yeah, we could take our hands and out our pockets now. That's it. I could give two shits. You know what I mean? Congrats to everybody that's happy about it and you know that it's a big deal too. You know, I did. I did run down to my division and like, hey, it's new rules. We take our hands. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm running that admins. You know, to my people. You know what I mean? It's, you right. Know, boom. But it's a big deal. We could do this. We could do that. But I mean, that was pretty much the the extent of it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I think people. It was just like, all right, cool. I can because some people do like putting their hands in their pockets. For them, it's more like a comfort thing. Yeah. And yeah, I saw a lot of people taking taking videos, pictures, and all that stuff with their hands in their pocket. I think it was just like, a, I'm doing it because I can. Yeah, we could do it. Yeah, we could do it. Yeah, like, doing it because you can. Statement. And the more people that like complain about it, the more they want to put yeah. their hands in their pockets, probably. And that, yeah, and the <laughs> retired chiefs, man, why do you, I don't know why, like, I don't know what I'm going to do, like, when I'm, when I retire, but I know I ain't going to really care two shits about, like, things like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's certain things now, like, if we wasn't potting about, like, you probably wouldn't, hear. like, I wouldn't even be talking about this Nav Admin if we wasn't potting. I'd have gave it to my sellers right. and ran it down right. and that was it. You know what I mean? Like, right. I really, like, that's not something that's, it's, we got way more, you know, we got way more going on. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if you heard, <laughs> I guess all this, I don't know if you heard when the lady asked Kaye about the Gaza Strip you know, and, and he was like, I'm from the hood of Chicago. <laughs> he was like, it's a hundred murders <laughs> A summer over there, like he was like, I don't know what's going on in Gaza. <laughs> He's like, I don't know, you know. I'm like, we got bigger stuff to worry about the has and pockets. For real, you know, right? Now, with all right. that said, though, the men, the guys, um, all we asking for is beards. You know, like. listen. <laughs> I think they said. We don't want to hear shit about beard, so let's let them yeah. put their hands in their pockets. Yeah, gonna, <laughs> we got to yeah. give them something. They going, yo, they going like everything. It'll be everything before bears. Hey, y'all, you know everything. Your knuckle hair, like you could grow, <laughs> you could grow your knuckle hair all the way out. <laughs> they gonna make sure it's known. That, 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 like, Telling you, they gonna make sure it is known. That, y'all that might as well cancel. It's never Just, coming into effect. And never, yeah. never. If this nav admin right here just tells you that it's, it's never going to happen, yeah. undershirts. You can wear compression shorts. You can put your hands in your yeah. pockets. And then y'all got some undershirt shit, like undershirts. Yeah, we got undershirts. 
some chicks yeah. who were under yet. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. All right, let's let's move on to another nav admin, um, mm-hmm. the DMAP nav admin. And this was one that people hit us up about. Actually, before we start, I'm going to read a message from somebody. Morning, right? He says ABE2. So this ABE, I'm not going to read the name or the ship that they from. Nothing like that, right? Uh, hey, no, I, I talked to him, so, you know. Uh, so ABE2 messaging you if you guys would be able to talk to Force again about why they have removed MAP for ABE and DC. ABE being one of the hardest working rates, highest suicide rate, maybe being one of the rates where people decide to get out of the Navy or not has become even worse because we are under man. But me being an ABE, I fought through all the he say, she say in adversity. Yo, that the fight through he say, she say is crazy. And yeah. To become and fall into top 10 percent of the Navy. And he expects me not to be rewarded here at my new command with no map to first class, which defeated my whole plan. Right. So shout out to the seller fighting through. He say, she say is, is I never heard that before. That's, that that sounds crazy. Man. Like, I had to fight. this. You know, I, I heard about fighting through adversity, man. But fighting through he say, she say. Man. He say, like, she that's say. A, hey, that's, that's a different hate, level of adversity. You know? like, <laughs> like, oh shit, he say over here, let me <laughs> smack that out the way. <laughs> she say out the way real quick. <laughs> you know what I mean? You remember that uh the Bernie Mac when he get off the train? I forgot what movie it is. He get off the train and he's slapping like, yeah, everybody. He's slap people. Yeah, that's that's how I imagine. <laughs> <That's> the- <laughs> He he say, say, she get say. your ass up out of here. She say, get your ass up out of here. Hey, shout out to you. I, I want y'all to know now, you know, because y'all think, you know, I, before y'all start thinking we this crazy, serious pie, if you send us questions, we're going to have fun with them. We're going to have fun with the things, right? <laughs> uh, but but we're we going to try to answer them. The first part of the answer is this, though. We don't have carte blanche, like, to get force on the episode every single, you know, chance that somebody want to talk to him. That's just, we, we, we don't have that cachet. Like we, all of yeah. that kind of like, Force wasn't even a scheduled guest, none of that stuff, right? We Our next like three podcasts were scheduled before Force. You know what I mean? So um, it, it just kind of happened naturally because Tish, you know, wanted to run her mouth and, you know, it kind of <laughs> happened. I mean, we appreciate, you know, Force for coming on. So we actually wasn't even that prepared for that, conversation like we only know and even coming into the conversation it was like Damon was talking to Force and that's kind of how we started so we only really knew the couple things that he said he was he wanted to talk about and then when we when he came on we were able to like open the door to other things but for the most part he had like three major things that he said he was willing to talk about and we also knew that we only had like an hour to have this conversation right because he had things Mm -hmm. going on so the people that's wondering why he doing it from a car, because it's 2024 and you can fucking podcast from anywhere. So just, you know, anywhere. shut up about that. But, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, why is he doing- Damon, where you at? Yeah. <laughs> Damon, where you at, bro? Yeah. Why are you doing it from a car? Because he can, you know? And the first clip for the people that thought like that, like we wasn't a part of the podcast. Like, <laughs> like, oh yeah, look at them. They just clipped themselves in, man. It's Black History Month. Like, it's Black History Month. Stop hating, you know what I mean? Like, like, like we black, man. It's Black History Day. How did those oh black people my God. become a part of this clip? You know what I mean? Like, shut up. Stop hating. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah, they got ball caps on. Damon. <laughs> they got on ball caps talking to the force, man. Like, how did they, you know, it, it is what it is. You know what I mean? So I just wanted to have fun with that too because I saw that a couple times. What are you in his car for? Why is he in his car? 2024, yeah. you're on his phone, man. You know what I mean? Well, like, come on. When I saw him in his car, I was wondering it too. You know, I'm like, yo, why are you in his car? Man? <laughs> you want to go to the home Right, office? but I was just glad that he was here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was yeah. just I was just glad that he was here. Yeah. He carved out some time for us. Like, dang. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So for that seller, that's the first thing is we can't, you know, always get him on. Then the second part is, I don't think you should look at it like force is the driving force behind all, like, every decision that's made. I think it's more people that go into like uh, the decision-making process than just force. So yeah, he was bold right. enough and brave enough to take the blame for something. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. it probably hit his desk and left his desk, but he's mm-hmm. not the person, you know? And I don't want you to like right. be waiting outside my man's house, you know, with a trench coat right. or something crazy, like, because you think he right. was the one that, you know, right. that, that, that made up this thing, you know, it's not just on force, you know? And, mm-hmm. and the one thing that I will say, even before we get to that, coming off that episode with force and some of the things that when he was talking about, like the feedback that he received, I will say this. Yeah. 
I don't know where that feedback comes from, you know, and I, I try to ask them that, you know, when we talk, but um, y'all got to make sure, like we are, as all of us, we got to make sure we get in that feedback up, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and through all the different channels that they see that at, see that feedback at, like podcast is like one channel. I don't think argue, mm-hmm. argue, uh, argument with a podcast host is going to make for uh, like a good change and in getting information, you know, flow up though. Right. Like just for right. like just for like somebody to get on and like the host just challenge everything they say at, at that time. Mm-hmm. Like I don't think we're gonna be able to talk to like forces and fleets and maybe the Micmon if that happens. If but um I will say right. get your feedback up so they know because some of the things he was saying that he got positive feedback about on the deck plates I don't know a lot of sellers that like have positive feedback about some of this stuff on the deck plates, you know? So mm-hmm. wherever he's receiving this feedback from, which might be numbers, percentages and stuff like that, you know, it could be an issue. Just like last episode, I think Charlie said retention was low and, you know, it's people like, and I know that CNO just got up and said retention is high right now is, 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 is not low. And I know some people, when they look at the actual quantification of retention, retention is, is most likely is is good, you know what I mean. But on the deck plates, most of us know shipmates that's getting out, and they got reasons why they getting out. So we just need to get that information to you know where it's, and that's called like an, anecdotal information, like just based off mm-hmm. our experience and stuff like that. But so we just need to get that information up to the people that need to hear it. You know what I mean? Because some of that shit could be overwhelming in our you know in our bubble in our experience, and that's kind of where we come from on this pod. So. I think that's mm-hmm. it, Teach, for my reflection from like the conversation with Force and stuff like that, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we don't dig back too, you know, too much all the time. Yeah. But I do want to get into this phase four um, thing, right? So this phase four uh, says DMAT phase four makes the following policy changes for DC and ABE sellers. So beginning with the March 2024 exam, so that's like next month, right? The Navy-wide advancement exam for advancement to E5 and E6 will transition to a rating knowledge exam. The rating knowledge exam will be com- uh, completely consistent with the regular advancement exam as to type and scope of questions and will be conducted using the same process and timeline, right? So nothing really shaken up right there. However, sellers are only required to pass this RKE, right? That's the rating knowledge exam, once per pay grade. And all time and rate requirements to take the exam are removed at the E4 and E5 pay grades. So as soon as you make E4, next time the exam come around, you can take it. As soon as you make E5, you don't got to wait 12 months. Next time the exam come around, you can take it, right? Um, successfully passing the RKE is a requirement for sellers to compete for assignments to billets in the next higher pay grade via A2P, that's advanced to position, and CA2P, that's command advanced to position, right? Uh, ESOs, education service officers, must create enlisted advancement worksheets and submit exam orders for their sellers. To support cycle 263 exam, order and timelines, exams for these sellers have been added. I'm not going to read that. Um, DC and ABE sellers advanced to E4 and E5 and cycle 260 are now eligible for the cycle 263 RKE, right? So as soon as it hits, it hits. You can take the RKE. Although not required to do so, sellers who pass the RKE may voluntarily take future RKEs in an effort to improve their marketplace score as measured by the seller scoring criteria in order to become more competitive to the marketplace through higher uh, through a higher exam score. So that's important, right? If you want to be more competitive in that marketplace, take that test again, score higher so you know you could be more competitive. Uh, once they pass the RKE, sellers may advance to E5 and E6 by one of two processes. So this is the big thing, right? So you take the test as soon as you can. When you pass it, here you go. It's two processes, E5, E5, E5 E6, right? So A2P, right? Advance to position. Sellers compete in the My Navy assignment marketplace for a billet at the next higher rank on the normal timeline relative to their PRD. For the civilians that's listening is projected rotation date. For the civilians that's listening, y'all probably still don't know what the hell I'm talking about. So, <laughs> uh, As specified in their permanent uh, change of station orders are as adjusted by higher authority or approved personnel, personnel action requests. So you compete uh, for a higher rank at your PRD. So you took this RKE. Now your normal PRD comes up and, you can, and you're looking for orders. And that's when you start competing. 
right? Mm-hmm. Multiple sellers competing for the same billet will be adjudicated by PERS 40 via comparison of the scoring cards that we talked about. Once matched to a billet at the next higher rank, the seller must obla serve to complete the full tour at the new rank in the new billet via extension or reenlistment as necessary, right? And may be frocked 30 days prior to transfer. So that's kind of just like the senior enlisted marketplace, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Sellers will be advanced by the gaining command upon arrival in the new billet after completion of required training. And that's like what we have right now with A2P. So that's A2P, right? So uh, CA2P, a commanding officer selects a seller in their command who has completed at least half of their tour. Half of the tour for E4 is 24 months. Half of the tour for E5 is 18 months. To advance into a vacant or projected to be vacant, bill it as validated by PERS 40. Additionally, with DMAT Phase 4, ISIX and uh, TICOM can also conduct CA2P from one assigned unit to another upon nomination by a seller CO so they could move uh, units in the same uh, TICOM. The new ISIC TICOM process will also require completion of at least half the tour prior to transfer and a vacant or projected to be vacant billet as validated by PERS 40. Additionally, it cannot result in a funded PCS move. An approved CA2P seller must obla serve to complete a full tour at the new rank beyond the PRD at the old rank via extension reenlistment as necessary and may be frocked upon PERS 40 approval of the MRR. Right, the seller will be advanced by the gaining command upon arrival in a new billet and after completion of required training. E four and E five sellers who have passed the RKE and will meet all the following criteria by the time they desire to enter the marketplace may request early entry into the marketplace from Purse forty via your electronic personal action request. That's the thirteen oh six. Thirteen oh six. Right slash seven. Right. Talk to your uh com- your career counselor. They can help you with that. Uh, more than one year at their current command, more than three years at that. So one, more than one year at their current command, two, more than three years at the current rank, three, more than one year until their PRD. So that's when, if you want to try to, you know, uh, compete and go into the pool yourself, they, they, that's the criteria. Advancement via meritorious advancement program. And that's what the seller was talking about. So MAP is no longer authorized for advancements to E5 and E6 for DC and ABC, the ABE sellers in the AC, right? So that's mm-hmm. kind of what, that's what that seller was talking about. And the policy commences March 2024, cycle 263. So that's it. I got a fact sheet too. I'm going to read two things off the fact sheet and then we could get into whatever the conversation that we want to get into. Um, Is implementation across additional ratings? Yes. The future additional ratings will be added. Um, What does advancement process look like for a seller looking to put on rank? Sellers must have their reporting seniors retention and advancement recommendation. That's on the eval. And have passed Mm -hmm. the rating knowledge exam. With these two, they are eligible to compete in a marketplace for advancement when hitting normal rotation windows. Selected sellers will advance after obligating service and reporting to the billing. Right. So that's A2P and that's the normal A2P process. And then CA2P, like I said, half, half your tour, the the captain could, you know, put you into a billet and then you can make rank at your command into that next billet up or your ISIC could move you to, or your ISIC or or TICOM could move you to somewhere in that, in your TICOM. Right. Um, the first thing I got is, it, it looks as if DMAP is going to have more phases than Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> 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 like, like, that's the first thing I got, right? And um, <laughs> the second thing I got is this, though. Unless you get that CA2P, you're not making rank. Like, from what I read, you're not making rank at your command unless you get that CA2P. If you're ABE or DC, uh, mm-hmm. uh, or E4 or E5, uh, a, B, R, D, C, you're not making rank at your, at your current command unless you get CA2P. Am I wrong about that? No, you're right. Because otherwise, you have to wait until you rotate. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. So now, yeah. and then stack this, and look, hey, y'all, we, go, we about to talk about this whole um, my Navy assignment, the Obliserve thing, right? right? The new Obliserve uh, changes, right? So we're about to talk about that. So stack that with the Obliserve changes and stack that with the whole uh, 30-month um, time of service. 
So where a seller would have made E5, like where a seller would have made E5 in three years or something like that, you know, just based off making rank fast, that's not happening now. Mm-mm. Right? So you got, you got a five-year, four-year, five-year window, you know, so you're going to be that same rank. You, you're not topping off E4 at your command unless you see A2P. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What's, your, yeah. what's up with that, Tish? What you think? Ah. Uh... It's going to be hard to, um, because advancement is something that motivates sailors. Uh That's, that's kind of what makes them be competitive. So if they know that they're not going to get advanced, well, I mean, unless they're trying to get the CA2P and like, like the person that kind (laughs) of hit me up, I guess, like, I mean, they're complaining about the map, but I mean, there's no more map, but I mean, you're going to have to hit that CA2P. Um, that's almost the same thing as map. But if you ain't in there, then yeah, you're gonna have to wait. Um, I guess it depends on your community and how fast you typically can make rank. But they're expanding it to all of them. I think I made E5 in uh, about four years, I think, three, four years. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Um yeah, I think it was about four years because it was right after my first tour. At, at the beginning of my next tour, I, I made E4. And then um, I forgot when I made E5. I know I made E6 in six years. So, I mean, it can kind of slow you down a little bit. Um, but, I mean, they're trying to... He, Force said in, the, in our episode that this was coming. Yeah. He didn't say when. <laughs> but but he said something like this could be coming down the turnpike and 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 here it is. Hey, um, so the sellers that I've talked to, they don't like this. Do yeah. you understand? Do you understand why they don't like it? Because of the wait? Oh. The wait time to advance and uh yeah. Yeah. So you know, because you used to be able to advance in like I said, like three years or something. Now you at least three years, yeah, now it's at least what for almost a little over four years. Like a tour. Yeah. Like a five year C tour. Yeah, like, for a whole tour, yeah. You're gonna be that a same whole tour. for a whole season tour. Right. Right. And you gotta compete for a, for a billet, you know, to get that next drink. Yeah. But like there's no is there there's no guarantee, right? Like yeah. <laughs> who how, how are you gonna guarantee that you're gonna get that billet, you know? Is that is um, that retention by like is that retention by like will or retention by force? <laughs> that's retention by force <laughs> like if you want to get something out of this you you gotta stay you know you gotta, you gotta stay, stay in you gotta be willing to you know maybe do a seat tour you know cause I was about to say and you gotta stay to see yeah and, and I think that's one of the big issues we got we have a retention issue cause that's what we feel you know, we already discussed, is there a retention? Is there not a retention issue? But I mean, we need people where the, the, sh- the ships are under man. Uh-huh. The Navy's under man. And, and even bigger than that, the ships are under man. That's where we need people the most. And so they got to come up with ways that's going to keep people out to sea. Yeah. And kind of hold that over their head, you know. Um, in order to to keep people in the navy, so I mean it. it I, yeah, and, and we need people in both we avenues. Need people. We need people in the navy. Yeah. And we need people out at sea, especially right, right. now with mm-hmm. war being on our horizon. Right, and we don't talk right. about that that much on this podcast. Mm-hmm. But war is definitely on our horizon. We're gonna talk about it a little bit more through different parts of this this episode. So we definitely need people. I don't know how to feel about this policy um, I'm, because, I mean, I'm, honestly, I want to get, I would like to get a junior seller on here to, to talk through this, a junior DC or a junior ABE to tell to mm-hmm. tell me like how, like how their people feel about this, like how their peers feel about this. There's things about right. it that I don't like because I'm used to what I was used to when I was a junior seller and I might not be seeing the future and like right. the future potential of something like this, I might not be seeing it. You know, all mm-hmm. I can think about is that I wouldn't have wanted my promotion. Like I was already mad that it took so long to just naturally make, you know, the pay grade. Like 
you know, right. certain like the 12 month wait, I'm like, I'm ready now. Like, you know, watching like FCEs and stuff, I put on second class once they get to the ship and, you know, I'm still like a, a fireman, you know? So right. I, I get that, you know, um, it, it might also kind of take away that whole, like, cause I feel like in the last like few years, we just been kind of like promotion, 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 promotion heavy, um, where it's like that kind of clouded our, in my opinion, that kind of clouded our thoughts about other things, um, right. subject matter, expertise, and stuff like that. But I mean, take an example, you know, that that's kind of don't help either. But um, it's just a mixed bag of a whole bunch of stuff, Tish. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a, it's a yeah. mixed bag of a whole bunch of stuff, and sellers ain't liking it. You know, um, yeah. I don't think they want to go do seven for the other DMAP stuff. I don't think they want to go do seven years. Um, you know, I don't think they want to know they passed the test and then wait three years or more or two years to like be able to put on rank when they commit to another command. And then that officer shit that we're about to talk about really adds to this whole thing. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. But they don't even have like the senior enlisted marketplace right yet. So why are they trying to implement some of the same policies that they're using there that we're still really trying to figure out yeah. into this policy? Like, let's crawl before we walk. Yeah, like, hey, we're going to mimic uh, this set that we've been getting some bad feedback from. <laughs> <laughs> we heard your we, feedback. Yeah, we heard, so we took and we're going to implement it anymore. <laughs> We took that and we gonna swing that over here for the junior sellers. It makes no sense to the senior sellers being the only ones bitching about it. Let's let the ju- let's equal opportunity. Let's let the junior sellers bitch. You know what I'm saying? Hey, just in case things got weird, we did have a technical issue there. Um, I guess this big Navy don't want us to talk about DMAT. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Who knows? But if any if anything, we do uh Let's get a let's get a, a, a young uh, DC man or ABE um, on the podcast so we can have a further conversation on it, you know. And even if we could get some other people too that's driving this whole these po- that's like that got some information on this on so they could clarify some stuff up for us too that will help. All right. Um, now, with that said, though, I do want to talk about this Obliserve, the Obliserve authorization changes uh, real quick. Um, I'm gonna try to make this quick. So changes to Obliserve process for sellers, right? So for application-driven Obliserve authorization requests, sellers no longer need to apply for Obliserve, quote, via Seaway. All Seaway data is now on My Navy assignments, and the seller simply has to submit a job application via My Navy assignments. There is no change to that job application. My Navy assignments will automatically apply for the Obliserve authorization if necessary. No additional seller action is required. Sellers outside of their uh, window who need to re-enlist or extend can submit a request via my Navy assignment seller homepage. A seller simply needs to click the submit Obliserve request button as pictured below. And it's, it's a picture, right? Um, so, and then it says, if you, if you wish to get an extension out uh, of the 30-day window, um, contact your, uh, your career counselor, right? Mm-hmm. So, I'm going to just read back the overview real quick. It says, my Navy assignments released 4.982 changes the way the sellers apply for and receive Obliserve authorization to re-enlist and extend. Formerly, sellers apply for Obliserve authorization via Seaway before applying for jobs. Now, my Navy assignment will automatically generate any Obliserve request as part of the seller's job application submission. So you need to look at my Navy assignments Mm -hmm. uh, and pull up the Obliserve requirements when you look at the job application details. Yeah, and if you if you n- know this already, we put links to everything in the podcast. So there's going to be a link to this, the, the sheet and reading all the information in the notes of the podcast. If you listen on Apple, I know for sure you could just pull up the links. But yeah, so that's that kind of adds to the other part, Tish. Right. Because now you're not like, you're not really obliserving by choice. If you pick them orders and you got to obliserve for them orders, my Navy assignment is going to obliserve you without you <laughs> even, you know, making the distinction. So it, in the picture, there it, there's a little drop down and you can, it says it is critical that command career counselors update a sailor's obliserve intentions and facilitate communication with the detailer when necessary. So the drop down menu, you can click intends to separate, intends to obliserve or has completed. 
So if you hit intends to separate and you try to select those orders, you're probably not going to get those orders. Yeah. yeah you're probably not going to get them. <laughs> you're probably not going to get those orders. And so in order for you to get those orders that you want, you probably going to have to select you know, it's going to have to set intends to, intends to obla serve and it's just going to automatically submit your obla serve for you. So, yeah, it's forced. It's a obla serve by force. Yeah. So when you start competing, when you start competing for them billets, the BBA, the billet based assignment mm-hmm. and, you know, all of that stuff, A2P, when you start competing for that stuff, most likely it's going to be like I, I I'm just guessing, but some, most of those billets, they already say you're going to, you're going to obviously serve. They yeah. already said it in the other one. Right. So it's obviously serve automatic. So if you staying in, this like, this kind of like promoting just stay Navy. It ain't yeah. no more like gray area. Like, uh, I had to pay off my car. You know, we had a baby. It ain't no more gray area. It's like, yo, you staying in? Do, do you know that? Cause we ain't even playing with you mm-hmm. no more. If you don't like Navy ain't playing. Yeah. Like, what you doing? You know, and that's, so that's big. And I, I urge y'all to, it's a small note, but that's a big deal, especially attached to this uh, phase four DMAP and what the future of this phase four DMAP kind of look like. Like, right. hey, we got you. We, we have your ass. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And <laughs> we're going to talk about me and Khalifa <laughs> in a second, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's kind of related. <laughs> it's it's kind of related to the me and Khalifa thing a little, a little bit too, right? <laughs> Um, this is where to come from Mia Khalifa, but this is where we are with our topic. So implementation of confidential reporting option for sexual harassment, right? Um, this is big because sexual harassment is attached to the SEMIO program. Mm -hmm. And with the SEMIO program, it's different reporting options. Um, and confidential wasn't one of them. Right. Right. So it just says this nav admin, this nav admin implements a confidential reporting option in addition to the informal, which already existed, formal, which already existed, and anonymous complaint process, which already existed. Right. For sellers, member, for sellers, for service members who experience sexual harassment as directed by then the references, which would be the instructions and stuff. Right. So for our Navy to, pre- to prepare for and dominate in combat, we must have strong teams. The strength of our teams depend upon the strength of our people. And that's standard. That's like standard verbiage, right? I ain't got to get into that. Effective immediately, this confidential sexual harassment reporting process is available for service members. A confidential sexual harassment report can only be submitted to a CCS or SEMIO. CCS or SEMIO will inform the reporting service member CO or commander of a confidential report within 24 hours of receipt. However, they must not disclose the identity or any PII of the service member that submitted the report, right? A confidential report does not trigger an investigation or disciplinary action. A confidential report allows the service member to access the support and referral services outlined in, you know, the different references that's there. Um, and then they got CCS information on here, stuff like that, right? The CCS and SEMIO program managers are subject matter experts within the command for advising service members on different avenues of redress and advising COs and commanders on the handling and processing of sexual harassment complaint. Um, and then it has like the guidances for the CMEOs and the CCSs to go through if they receive a confidential um, complaint, mm-hmm. right? So when approached by a service member alleging sexual harassment, the CCS or CMEO must explain the informal, formal, and anonymous uh, process and the confidential process which is outlined in the NAV admin, right? So, and that's normally what you do as a SEMIO. You tell a seller like the different options that they have, mm-hmm. right? But yeah, so now it's a confidential process. Uh, we still got the no wrong door. Um, pro- we still got the no wrong door policy. I don't know if we ever talked about on this podcast, but I re- that's about a year and a half old now. Um, if the alleged sexual harassment also involves behavior that may be sexual assault to include sexual contact, the CCS or SEMIO program manager must with the service member's permission, ensure a warm handoff to the SARC, right? Mm-hmm. And um, I don't think the SEMIO, when I was looking at the fact sheet on this, I don't think the SEMIO or CCS really ever has to really say anything. Oh, it says it right here. The CCS or SEMIO program manager is called to testify as a witness at a court martial or admin hearing relating to the report of sexual harassment, 
right? Yeah, that's the only time um, that it that when if you make a confidential, that's the only time that they can um, speak on it, right? Yeah, yeah. The only says, time they can uh, disclose. Yeah, are they are if they have to talk to the SARC because it's the identification of a high risk to the health or safety of the service member or another person. Yeah. Um, you know, or if the service member changes the report to informal or formal. Mm-hmm. Right. So because you can always change. So even with the form, uh, informal formal um, with the regular semio process, you can always change the report from informal to formal if you want or, you know, things like that. So right. that's confidential reporting. I urge everybody to get in and like read the NAV admin and read the fact sheet about confidential reporting and like and know, know the pathway, know your rights and, you know, know all of that stuff. So. I think that's a big deal. I mean, you being a legal man, I don't know, you know, what you think about. It. I've been a, a well, I was an LN and I was also a simio at one point also. Um so yeah, the, and we work closely with um simios and CCSs and stuff like that. So this is this is this is good. I think it's a, it's it gives another option. Yeah. You know, with a confident with the confidential reporting. So um yeah, that's it's it's it's, it's nice. I like it. Yeah. I'm with it. Because you, you still get all your rights. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's what some people want sometimes. You right. Know, they just want to be able to do it on their own, um, you know, on their own, like without no no other um, influence. Mm-hmm. You know, I've had sellers who, I, I've had sellers who submitted informals and uh, the CO wanted to go to formal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like now I make that a formal because I was, I was sexually assaulted before, so right. I, I want that to be a formal because they had a personal connection to it. Exactly, yeah. You know, let people make their own choice on how they want to carry out. Yeah, because the biggest thing, the biggest thing with the confidential is that it, it doesn't trigger an investigation um, nor any disciplinary action. Um, and that kind of goes along with what you're saying. Sometimes people just want to report it. They want to get the resources that they can get um, as far as like, you know, whatever it is that they need. Like, uh, I know therapy is probably one of those. They just want to kind of get that and just kind of move on. You know, they don't want to go through the whole, you know, ordeal of the investigation and all that. They just kind of want to, they just kind of want to push through. And, yeah. um, and that's, just, that's what the, that's an option that's given on the sexual assault side, but not before now, yeah, not necessarily on the sexual harassment side. So mm-hmm. now we're bringing that same option over and we're calling it the confidentiality. So I, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. And it gives people more control. There. Yeah. And for the CEOs out there, man, don't be trying to make y'all semios tell y'all who it is. You know, right. It's confidential. It's confidential. Right. Right. Don't do y'all. it. Yeah. Semios don't do be it. They <laughs> eval is going to be affected if they don't tell y'all. <laughs> Oh Which I can understand CEO, why yes. the CEOs would want to, because it's like if we have someone who is not treating, you know, their peers right, if we have somebody who's the who's, you know, one one person can ruin a whole, you know, shop. So if you have someone who is displaying those, you know, sexual harassing someone, I wouldn't want them in my command. I would I wouldn't. Yeah. You know, so I can understand where the seals are coming from, but you have to respect the um, the person who's submitting the report. You have to respect, you know, their wishes. Yeah, uh, they know. get that fatherly. They get that fatherly connection to the ship and the yeah, sellers, they do. and they mm-hmm. they really want to. You know, I, most seals that I've dealt with, like behind, like in the office, right? Mm-hmm. I'm talking about personal conversations. Um, they really want the best for the sellers and don't want nothing to happen to them, right? Get, connected to that. And it's like, right. we got these processes for a reason, mm-hmm. right? And that's why we getting these outside entities to stepping in. Sometimes it's not always for the bad stuff. It's like for reasons like CEOs that might just get like overly eager to like introduce themselves in situations that like the seller might not want to when they got protected rights for those reasons. So right. we, we, you know, we love the CEOs and we appreciate Mm-hmm. How much you know y'all care, but right. you know we it's these systems in place, y'all. So right? Yeah. Don't be making them semi olds. Don't be making them <laughs> you know they going who to. Was, yeah, yeah. Who, you, who was it? Who was it? Who, who was, was it? Though? You know who was? It? Wh- what department books. was it? <laughs> <laughs> it's off the books. You know? yeah. I'm uh, telling I've been, you, I've been behind them doors. Right. I know, I know what it is like. Um, 
But but before we move on and start talking about me and Khalifa, teach, I went to my command holiday party. Mm-hmm. Right. So first, of all, why y'all? What holiday is it? Teach. There's people from the command that listen. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I would, listen when There's you said in the, the chat, listen, I gotta go man. to my command holiday party. I looked at the clock like, well, hold on, what? It, it is February. Y'all celebrating sense. Black History Month? President's Day, Tish. Like, President's Day, Black History holiday Month, party, Valentine's what? Day. <laughs> All of them. Every holiday, man. It's every one, man. You know what I mean? Uh, the first quarter on, we, holidays. We've been on stand down. Uh, you know, we've been, I'm not stand down. We've been, you know, we had to move to the yards and we've been on Palm and all that. So that's the first option, you know, to do it, man. I'm going to just keep it real, man. Planning, planning ain't, you know, the planning ain't, <laughs> planning ain't probably where it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? Who is but, um, on the committee? <laughs> well, it's a carrier. So, you know, you got civilians with MWR, all types. Of yeah. Stuff. But it, it, it was, it was cool. You know, so mm-hmm. this was, it was cool. It was, uh, first off, I wasn't going to go. Um, my, my top night, my EDMC, he convinced me to go, you know, he's, he was going stack. He like, yo, I'm going stack. Come through, go stack. You know, we hang out, we talk, stuff like that. And I did catch up with him when I was there. I wound up going to go see my sellers and man, he disappeared. You know, I don't know what happened to him. You know, <laughs> so you I went back looking for him and no, nah, it was all cool because I came, he was there on time. Okay. Like, you know, Mashy, you know, he was there oh, on yeah, time. Yeah, he was oh, like, y'all no. was there for the food. He was, right. I was there before the food. You know what I mean? Like, so, but he was there on time. I got there two hours late because I don't have, I, I live in the barracks. I mm-hmm. don't have any clothes. So I had to go to Lynn Haven Mall. One of my sellers was like, go to Lynn Haven Mall, senior. So I had to go to Lynn Haven Mall. I bought everything I had on and some cologne because I feel like you need to smell a little good when you go to a holiday party, right? So I bought all my clothes, right? So for the listeners, if you ever see me repeating outfits too much here in the barracks, it's because, <laughs> I don't have clothes here. Like, and I try my best not to. You know what I mean? <laughs> so everything I had, I bought from the mall. So um, I show up to the party, you know, I'm like two hours late, but it's it was cool. Like it was a very it's a carrier, so it's a very big like venue, mm-hmm. mad like food stations. It's an Italian station, it's a seafood station, it's a they had the mac and cheese bar, they had the slider station. Oh dang. Uh, Two levels, two levels, a balcony, bars all over the place, uh, DJs all over the place. And it was a casino night. So it was, you know, stuff like that happening all over the place. And then like the prizes were like all expense paid vacations with like travel packages. And they were the three grand prizes, you know, big, like, like, and I'm talking about like, I think this was like $15,000 worth of vacations for between the three of those, you know, packages. Mm -hmm. And um and then it was fifty five thousand dollars worth of door prizes mm-hmm. and I actually won I won I always win like but I always give away my damn prize right so I won this time and on it's funny because on the way there Angeline was like yo you gonna give away your prize she's laughing at me because I always <laughs> give away my prize I'm like hell no I ain't giving away no prize not on a carrier right you know, I'm, I'm like they got the grand prize it's like four thousand dollar vacation with two thousand dollars worth of travel and like I'm not, I'm not giving that up. So she was like, she laughed. She was laughing at me. So I get the door prize, right? At this party, I get the door prize. And I'm in line, I'm talking to a couple of sellers. I'm in line. Man, I gave that prize up. So good. That line was so long. I gave that prize. I said, yo, did y'all win something? Somebody was like, I did. Then the person that has what was like, I did. And I gave that, I gave that ticket to the person that has what. And I got up out of it. I made my last little round. I got up out of there. And I ain't about to stand in that. It's too long, man. Carry your line. You could have went back to the ship and claimed your prize, but I'm about to go and leave for 21 days with the baby. Mm-hmm. I just ain't feel like that hanging over my head. So I just gave my prize up. Do you know what it Kept was? It moving. No, no. But, I, but after I sat down, I didn't see any door prizes when I gave up my ticket. Mm-hmm. When I sat down, I saw somebody walking somewhere with a Nintendo Switch. Mm. I'm like, damn, they giving out switches. <laughs> like, I was like, <laughs> I was like, they giving out switches and door prizes. Like, what am I doing? Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. You know, I'm tripping. Like, I could have got a tablet, something, but I, I I gave it up. It is what it is. Um, it was fun. It was cool. Sounds like it. I, I saw a bunch of sellers. Um, even sellers that I only had like one time interactions with that, like, so teach, I'm I'm antisocial, right? Yes. Like I live in the barracks, right? And like, <laughs> so one of my just today, right? Just today, like on my way up here to my room, one of my sellers was like on the phone like in the same stairwell as me because mm-hmm. the elevator's messed up. And I like, 
damn near ran up like two flights. Like, like you ever see the action movies? I damn near ran <laughs> up so he wouldn't see me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so he wouldn't see me. and be like, hey, see it. Like, and all he would have said was hi, but I, I feel like you dealing with like- that. Like, like right now at the banks, right? I'm super like, super duper, like really like not that. Like, yeah. So, so I go, you know, but I like, I got a couple people, you know, that I, so, but I'm seeing sellers that I've only had like one time interactions with like, yo, senior, what's up? You know, they're a little saucy or whatever mm-hmm. like that too. But it's like, they, 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 they seeing. Like, this is one dude, I just met him in CMC's office the other day. He's like, seeing, what's up? I was like, oh shit. Like, he said, okay, yeah, cool. Remember the last time I went to any event, like I ain't get invited like nowhere. Right, like, now I'm like, right. now I'm like knowing people and, and, and they're drunk haze, you know? So that, <laughs> and, you know, and I've been on baby leave like here and there. So yeah. that kind of, but it, that felt good, you know? And uh-huh. then the sellers, my sellers uh, greeted me one of my sellers from my last command that's at the new command, me and her talk for a little bit. She got some real life stuff going on. So me and her talk, we had a real good conversation. Mm-hmm. I met I met one of her friends. Me and him talked. He asked me like for advice being, you know, climbing up in rank. Mm-hmm. And all my advice had to do with like being a junior seller and thinking about junior. He was like, yo, nobody ever like kind of gave me advice like this. No senior chief, no chief. I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's just me keeping it, you know, real with you. But the last thing I want to say is, well, it's just a lot of things I would say and want to say, but I don't got enough time to talk about that. The last thing that I do want to say is that this was on my Navy bucket list to go to a carrier um, holiday party. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so this was on my Navy. I got out of there. Mine too. Quick, so. Mine too. Yeah. So it was on my Navy. Did you, have you ever went? I have not. The bucket list continues because, you know, I'm yeah. still out here holiday partying. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. So if it, I'm gonna have to invite you to one. I'm, I'm gonna have to yeah. invite you. To one. Yeah, I'll, so this I'll was be there my, next year. Look. Yeah. So you, so you, but you got a Navy bucket list too, huh? Yes. Right. Like, yes. and I think I think a lot of people, you know, should have, uh, or, or maybe they have had. Mm-hmm. Another thing that was on my Navy bucket list was to say permission to speak freely to like a commanding officer, and then just say some real shit, you know. And I did that before. Uh, hey, permission to speak freely, sir. Yeah. Hey, this shit's fucked up. So, you know, like I, I actually did that. You know, that was I felt good walking out of there. No matter how, no matter what he thought when I left, like eh, senior, I felt good. Like I got it off. You know what I mean? Um, but um, another thing that I do want to talk about is that because I am because I was talking to a, a, a retired fleet the mm-hmm. other day, and um, I, if I'm I got my name, you know, I got a package submitted to be an SEL. Mm-hmm. You know, command senior chief. Yep. I, I fucked up and said command master chief on our, on the episode with force. I'd be listening back to times I make mistakes and be cringing. Right? <laughs> I'm gonna listen back to this episode and probably cringe. But um, you know, we were talking about like he was asking me if my wife was ready to be a a, a SEL's wife. You know, and then so I'm at this holiday party yesterday, and I'm like, damn, like you know, I'm gonna have to be at the Thanksgiving dinner. I'm gonna have to be at the Christmas dinner. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to be at the holiday, it's no longer an option where I'm going to be like, no, nah, I can't come. Right. I'm going to have to you be at the go. holiday party. And it's going to be a couple of things that I got to be obligated to do. Mm-hmm. Like I heard the CMC got on the mic in the beginning, warmed up the crowd and stuff like that. So um, these are things that I'm not necessarily going to say is going to put me out my comfort zone. I think I'm super like I'm able to do all that stuff. You know, I just don't default to that, mm-hmm. you know, to that kind of stuff. So, I'm, uh, you know, that's just. One of the things that, like, I was thinking about, like, damn, I, you know, I, I gotta do all this shit if I, if I do pick up, right? Know? So, I have considered that. Teach. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Hey, you gonna have to make it do what it do. I think it'll yeah. just come naturally to you, though. I mean, you get up here and you and you speak on here, um. So I think you'll find your way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I think yeah. you'll find your way through it. <laughs> you yeah, gonna I be dreading don't... it. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes, yeah, I'm an introvert. I'm yeah, an introvert. So I yeah. just don't I just don't default to mm-hmm. that. Like, but I could I could do it. Like you give me the mic. Right. I'm gonna do it. But right. I just don't I just don't when you got back from to it. when you got back from the holiday party that wasn't on the holiday, were you tired? Like does it drain you because you're an introvert? Let me let me like you want the real <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I want the <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me tell you. <laughs> I don't know why you got me doing this. So I left the holiday party, right? Since all my sellers and shit there, right? So I left the holiday party and everybody was saucy. They was drunk, mm-hmm. right? People, sellers I know, drunk and all this shit. Since all my sellers was there, of course I wasn't going. It, like nowhere near have too many drinks, mm-hmm. right? So I'm drinking like Grand Marie and pineapple. So... I, I wasn't satisfied, you know, <laughs> with the tip. 
pause. I pause. That that sounds crazy. But I wasn't satisfied with like like David, being where you tested. at? <laughs> David, where you David, at? David no. wouldn't even caught that shit. He wouldn't even caught it. <laughs> but listen, the tipsiness that I had there wasn't satisfactory for me. So <laughs> I couldn't really go to like uh like a liquor store and so I went to Wawa. <laughs> it got like some orange crushes. <laughs> so, so so by the time I got to my room, I crushed a couple of orange crushes. And uh I guess I was worn out. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, like <laughs> that whole thing sounds crazy as hell, man. Like it sounds wild. But yeah, so I don't even know, Teach, like if I was <laughs> drained. You know what I mean? But I, at this point now, like when it comes to parties and stuff like mm-hmm. that, I, I know for sure that um I like I know how to like control it. Like yeah. I'm not, I'm not about to stay till my energy get like when I start feeling like, all right, this is done. It's weird. Um, mm-hmm. uh, it's nobody like, I, I just leave. Like, and that's kind of what I did. That's, I, I left you know, yeah. Irish goodbye. Like I'm out of here. You know, <laughs> I just rolled out. Okay. Like, hey, you where's know? seeing you at? <laughs> yeah. You start seeing people on a drunk missions. You seeing people, you know, coming downstairs with the glossy eyes. It's like, right. All right, it's just time for me to slide. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So, I just got up out of there, but I definitely had a good time at the at the holiday party, and it was a carrier holiday party, so that's off the bucket list. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Well, if anybody want to invite me to a holiday party next year, that's on the carrier. Please let me know. Thank yeah. you. And I and I want to <laughs> shout out T. She did just start working her people. People ask these questions like. Uh, did she get a job yet? You know, oh, you know, like did they? Care. Oh, they yeah, concerned about care, so. my finances. Yeah, te- yeah teach working, yo. She's I'm working. working. Got a good. I got a she's real good. job out here in these streets. But it's straight though. I like it though. I, I really do. Um, today though, so today I got a 59. I'm in the 59 club. And yeah. usually, you know, when you work with civilians on the military side, like, a lot of times when the civilians get in they 59, most of the time we have that day off. Uh-huh. So when they were like, oh, we get a 59 tomorrow. In my head, I was like, fuck. <laughs> like mm-hmm. just a 59? <laughs> fuck yeah. your 59 minutes. <laughs> but they were yeah. all excited. Like, oh, we get a 59. They all excited about it. And I'm just like, man. All my people's is off tomorrow, though. <laughs> Everybody off tomorrow, and I got to come up in here. Like, so that reality is, you know, a little bit to set in. But, you know, it's it's easy work, though. I, I, I like it. I'm feeling it. Um, I had to do a, because it's a government job with um, Homeland Security. So I had to get a background check. And so they mm-hmm. call in. They calling everybody right now, you know, making sure I'm good and everything. So check her, check her TikTok. Y'all. Yeah, check my. T- <laughs> she dancing like Beyonce on a movie to the floor. Oh no! <laughs> check her I think I, I think I took a lot of it off. I'm trying to be, you know. Check I was like, TikTok. let me remove some of this stuff, but uh, but no, it's it's straight though. Um, I could tell you with the pension plus disability plus now my uh my government check yeah 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 this this is where i start rubbing my knees like cat williams mm. <laughs> like mm, yeah yeah i, I need to put you on you. blast about something Tish. what 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 i i'm i'm a request for you to do something man cool I mean, shit you know, so I'm going to just blast this out of nowhere. I, I I think you should hold like a women's panel about the uh, the whole pregnancy, Nav Admin, <laughs> and the changes. You know what? Um, it's funny and, like, that it's funny it that you're pod. saying that because while I was in hair and makeup, while I was getting ready for the pod, I call it hair and makeup because that's what I be doing right before I come on. Um, I was actually thinking about that for Women's History Month. Yeah, because that's in March. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm glad you you said that because that that's a good set. I was going to talk to you about it, but since we're talking about it now, like right here on the air, yeah. if anyone would be interested, if there's any ladies out there that would be interested on being on the panel with me um, and discussing, you know, current and future of the Navy, being a woman in in the Navy or armed forces, you know, I'll, I'll welcome all the all of the uh all the different branches 
But uh, yeah. if you if anyone would like to be on a panel and and let's just chat and talk, you don't have to be local. You can be you know wherever. We'll just have to sync up the time. Just make sure you got a camera. Use your phone. You can be in your car if you want to. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and listen, y'all, y'all, you know, y'all gotta. It's gonna be a group of women. It's gonna be so, a group of women. Yeah, y'all gotta, y'all gotta know. Like everybody don't need the backstory to everything for every yeah. conversation y'all <laughs> have. You know what I mean? Like I remember that's gonna be you know, a five-hour episode. Yeah, like I was listening <laughs> to this podcast. They asked the lady. They said, "How did you get brain damage from the car accident?" Mm. She said, "Check this out. I grew up in the Bronx. <laughs> My daughter is a dancer." So she was like, she then she said, we got a dog. Like, I forgot what kind of dog this is. This is a such and such dog. Mm-hmm. Six minutes into this story, she was like, honestly, I really don't even remember. The brain question. Damage. I said, oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, so for the ladies, I'm going to need y'all, you know, I'm going to need y'all to know, y'all, I'm going to have to edit this episode. Listen. So. You know, keep it G funk. <laughs> they gonna come keep with it. it. They gonna know, come with it, it for sure. Funk. They gonna yeah, come so. with it for sure. Cause we need all the personalities, all the yeah. personalities. Yeah, that's gonna yeah. be and, that's gonna and, be fun. And, and the response from the um the changes within that, but I, I really want y'all to get y'all voices heard, mm-hmm. and I want um y'all to get it off. I just don't want no dudes there that's arguing about women having babies to get out of deployment. Right. Right. Um, I just don't want that conversation. So, like that conversation could be had anywhere else, but not on our platform. Right. Like, I, I understand it's a conversation. I identify that it's a conversation. I've been on the side where me and Damon have like witnessed somebody say that they getting pregnant to leave uh, the ship. Like I like heard somebody actually say that, but I don't care about battle of the sexes for everything. Right. You know, somebody else could do that. But definitely, teach do that panel, man. I'm looking forward to hearing about it. Um, yeah, y'all hit me up. Um, slide in my DMs. Um, or you can comment under the uh, this uh, post, and then I'll hit you up, and we can what, see if we can set something post? up. What post? The post when once we post it. What this video? This, on this episode. Oh, because this ain't get you gotta listen to the episode to hear this call you to gonna, action. You know what I mean? This ain't getting clipped. You up. not gonna get this, it clipped. This ain't this ain't getting clipped up. We might clip you this me and Khalifa. Dedicated. We might clip this me and Khalifa up. So <laughs> me and Khalifa, she said that being on OnlyFans, being in the army is worse than being on OnlyFans because being in the army is selling your body to the government. <laughs> that's it. That's what she said. That that's the post. Yeah. So me and Khalifa said that. Is that true, Tish? Hell <laughs> no. Oh. Hell no. Listen, she can she can try to keep her dignity intact all she want to <laughs> and compare it to mine. But let me tell you something. It, we, we, will, we are not the same, ma'am. We are not the same. No. No. Yeah. Mm-mm. So yes, we, yes, we didn't. No, we didn't run out of topics. Yes, <laughs> we've made it to a Mia Khalifa. Topic. Mia we, Khalifa. We all the way down to Mia Dab Khalifa. Uh, hey, Mia so Khalifa was, been just saying shit recently, yeah. right? She been just saying crazy wild things all over the place to, I guess, stay relevant. I would have a funny joke about like Mia Khalifa and like if she really just wanted to get back relevant. But I'm going to not say it. Maybe she had. Maybe she. that's what she was doing. Because that was yeah, the dumbest I'm, thing ever. Yeah. She's just trying to be relevant. She's trying to be controversial to be relevant. I think she already got fired for uh, statements about something else and stuff like that. But, hey, you know, I'm going to keep it respectful, man, even though you're disrespecting our services and all that. And you're saying weird, wild shit. Yeah. And the way she was saying it, like, it was, like, real deep. Like she was like, right, <laughs> like like it was like real thought provoking. Like, right. like she was like really getting something off. <laughs> I mean, you, you need to stop. You know? Right. I, I, in that one sentence I just said, I had like three jokes that I'm not going to say. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you say like three puns that I'm just not going to say. But me and Khalifa, chill out. You know, chill yeah. out. Stop. Leave us alone. We don't want your smoke. We, we don't, don't want yeah. no problems with you, me and Khalifa. Stay over there. Don't talk about no service, whether it's Mm-mm. the Army, the Navy, even the Air Force. Don't right. talk about no service. No, no. even know? Space Force. Shout even out to Space, Space Force. Force. 
<laughs> we hold Shout all Shout out them. to the Space Force. I will we tell you that um, I, I think that OnlyFans kind of at one point contributed to our, our retention. <laughs> you said retention? <laughs> our retention. At one point, there was a lot of sailors that was when OnlyFans became a big thing. Uh-huh. There was a lot of sailors that started making money off OnlyFans and they ended up getting out the Navy because they were making so much money. Oh, so it took away from it. You're saying it took away from Yeah, retention. yeah, yeah. It took, yeah, it took away from retention. Yeah. There, yeah. I've known, I know of a few people and have heard of a few more um, that got out because they started, you know, doing a whole OnlyFans thing. And so they were like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm getting a lot of money with this. Let me go ahead and roll on out. They gained their freedom, ring, freedom wings through um, OnlyFans. So, you know. Yeah, it rock had, out. It has its place. Listen. Yeah, rock out. They served. They, yeah, they sure did. You know? They they serve. serve. They did their time. <laughs> <laughs> they did still they, serve. And they just serve something they, a little they, different. Yeah, you know? but they serve. They Y'all are serve. keeping the world turning. They have yeah. a place in this economy right now. <laughs> yeah, it's I needed. Appreciate, I appreciate it. <laughs> it's a couple. It's 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 one real famous. Uh, I think Instagram. I don't know how. I, don't, I wouldn't say famous. Uh, I think her name like Allison Megan or something. I know she was. Military. I know. It's, I know. It's quite a few. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. But you remember the. I mean, it might what be was he a Navy money. SEAL? I think it was a Navy SEAL, right? Yeah, we talked about him. Yeah, yeah, we talked about him. Yeah, the we, Navy we, SEAL was we, one yeah, of them. Yeah, we talked about him. We guys, we can't, we can't get back into this. Uh, and it was, it was a couple of them that I've known. Was one, wife, of, one person that wife. was in the barracks. <laughs> there yeah, was, there yeah, was yeah. just one person that was in the barracks doing it, and somebody called called her out and reported yeah, her to NCIS. About that. You about that yeah, like that's yeah, crazy. They just trying to do the world a little bit good. Yeah, as long man. as they will everybody, you know, yeah, everybody need that. Everybody, you know, people, people, you know, everybody. You know they, there's a place for it. So don't yeah. be comparing OnlyFans to to the service members. Like that's just crazy. Yeah, Mia. Yeah, shut up, Mia. Do better, <laughs> shut Mia. Shut your ass up. Go ahead. And, and that's even her real name. Like I never knew that. Like maybe oh, that's yeah. Maybe yeah. Maybe that's an education piece for some listeners. I never knew Mia Khalifa's name wasn't. Mia Khalifa. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, where is the story? It's right here. So Mia Khalifa's real name is um Damn, what's her name? Uh Sarah Jo Chow Mon. Sarah Jo. I didn't know that. I thought mm. her name was Mia Khalifa. So I mean that's that though, but I'm not like sorry if you knew that and you're like, damn, you ain't know that. I'm not that first in Mia Khalifa. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> but um, yeah, all right. So off that, hey mom, if you don't know who Mia Khalifa is by now, um, she's a porn star. I know my mom listens. She, yeah, who is Mia Khalifa? Like a, a porn star, mom. You know I mean? Rewind this and go back, and it's a whole bunch of puns that like you probably get now. Um, but yeah, so shout out to everybody that's doing something. Shout out some to money mom. and shout out to all our service members. Um, so speaking of doing things to make money after the military, mm-hmm. um, serious story, single parent vets struggle to access post-military benefits. And it was a study by uh, a place called RAND, right? Objective Analysis Effective Solutions. It just says, uh, I'm not going to read it all, but it says um, veteran single parents surviving but not thriving, right? So here where the key find I'm going to read the key findings and the recommendations, right? So the key findings, veteran single parents are more likely to be women and less likely to be white than veteran couple parents, right? Uh, veteran single parents face greater financial insecurity than vet couple parents, but have greater financial security than non-vet single parents. Vet single parents report relatively similar mental and physical health to vet couple parents, but lower access to healthcare services. Vet single parents are using GI Bill benefits to pursue higher education. Black and Hispanic single mothers report the highest rates of school enrollment across all vet single parents. Vet single parents enrolled in higher education reported significant barriers to using GI Bill benefits and achieving academic success, right? So those were the findings of this study. It was a study done. Mm -hmm. The recommendations is to create transition services that target single parents as a unique group, provide financial support for childcare for veterans, 
rethink elements of the GI Bill to better support vet single parents and parents in general who are pursuing higher education, address in-person attendance requirements, and part-time attendance uh, disincentives, which are key barriers for single parents. So you thought I wasn't going to know that word? Nah, you kind of struggled <laughs> for a little bit. Up, <laughs> no, I, I ain't struggled you had at to all. A little bit. <laughs> no, I, no, I had to <laughs> swallow my, my, my mucus. Don't play with me like that. <laughs> You know, uh, I, before you messed it up, I just had to come in and would, alley-oop I, that thing real I quick. I would have never messed that up. Like, that's an easy <laughs> word to teach. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, develop targeted outreach to connect single mothers with mental health care and encourage single fathers to seek out primary care. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, I'm, again, that's a topic that might be near and dear to you. Um... I mean, you might not be struggling, but you are. Yeah, uh, yeah, I can see where they would have issues accessing care because um, of child care. Like, you don't have the CDC anymore with those um, rates that are lower than your typical child care that's out yeah. in town. So I can see where that would um, where that would be an issue. Um, and then, as far as the um, the GI Bill, um, yeah, so. The the course that I'm looking into, oh, so I'm looking at starting my master's program and mm-hmm. one school you have to go, <clears throat> excuse me, once a week. It's eight weeks. So you have to go once a week. There's another school where you have to go, it's four weeks. You have to go twice um, or once every other week. So it's twice during the program or whatever, right? Um. And I can see where if someone is a single parent having to find that child care again, um, having to find that child care so that you can maximize, you know, being a full time student so that you can maximize the, the post 9-11 with that BAH. Um, so I can see where that can be something that's an issue or that's yeah. something that's a struggle um, with single parents. and. Yeah. Um, Hey, stay in the Navy. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Like, use oh, it as a retention tool. See? Use it as a retention see, tool. <laughs> see what I'm saying? This one got forced up here last time. <laughs> hey, I, so <laughs> the Navy it, says st- stick with us, stick yeah. with us, and get that. Job. But I think there's there's a lot of people who are struggling in the in the Navy with childcare too. Um, so it's it's a battle on each side, really. Um, I yeah, don't even know. Cool how to even fix it other than like, cause I know that the VA doesn't give any type of um, financial support for childcare. Um, so they've given that recommendation. So I'm, uh-huh. I'm here for it. It's true. They, yeah. they don't, well, they give you extra money for having a kid, but you know, they can tack on a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, so for for single parents, for I guess for any parent, really for child care. Yeah, I mean, single parents would need more. They than couple need, parents, right? It's not too depending on how your family dynamic. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not two incomes or two even potential incomes. Right. I can't lie. I'm a little. I know this for sure that I don't have as I need to work on my empathy for single parents. Mm-hmm. I know that for sure, right? Um, because I grew up in a single parent household, right? Mm-hmm. Like again, we didn't live with our dad, right? Mm-hmm. So no, no knock, no knock to my dad. My dad was he was around. He was available. He's still around and available. Like one of my favorite people in the world. But we didn't live with him. We lived with my mom. My mom had to get busy. She had to work two, she had three kids. She had to work two jobs. She had to do a lot. So me personally, I need to work on my empathy for single parents because I watched my mom get it done, which probably in some ways, and it's just me, because I know she listened and she probably Nah, it didn't, you know, she'll negate what I'm saying. It, it, <laughs> I think, like, in my own opinion, I think, like, her having to take care of us limited, like, her potential. You know what I mean? And, like, the things she could do, because she really had these three things that she had to, like, nurture and care about and worry about having a roof over their head and food in their mouth. Mm-hmm. She couldn't, it's certain risk that, a certain risk that she just couldn't just take anymore because right. you can't when you got kids. So you have to like have some form of work. You have to, you know, be able to provide and stuff like that. So, and I get, cause for, I was talking to my wife and she was like, oh yeah, like I got to find a daycare for the dog. Cause I don't know how I'm going to take care of the dog and the baby. If you're not around and 
you know, and I was like, probably like, like wrong about my responses to that, mm. you know, but it's because I need to be a little bit more empathetic about, because I, I saw my mom do it, you know, right. and, and, and we saw, like a lot of us saw our parents do it mm-hmm. without any help. And that's not fair because like nobody should have, it's, it's like comparing like superhero type shit to like normal shit. Like, right. Nobody should have to do that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I just, you know, that's my personal kind of thing about it. You know, I hope we figure something out and we do make those changes that that study found mm-hmm. because uh, single parents, you know, most likely do need more help, you know, than, than, than couple parents. Because another thing, Teach, like you kind of hinted at it, is time. Yeah. Like you might not have time to wait around for certain stuff or do certain. Like me and my wife kind of tag team um, adding the baby to theirs. Like she did a couple of things, passed me, the, passed me the baton. I took it. I went to Dares. I added the baby. I'm gonna pass her the baton back. Let her call uh, the PC, at the uh, primary care spec. Like so, it's like, and then it's just easier. It's time. Like it's a timing thing. You right. know what I mean? Like she could go if I need to go do something. I could do it because she could watch the baby. If she need to go do something, she could do it because I could watch the baby. So it's different. You right. Know? So I, I, you I don't can't have imagine. That. You yeah, don't have that yeah, as a single parent. Yeah. You, you just gotta do it. That's why I'm so grateful. For my situation after I got a divorce, um, my ex-husband stayed here so that he could continue to, you know, be a big part of the boy's life and be present, not just financially, but like physically present. We like we did 50-50, like the boys would be with me for a week and be with him for a week. Um, And matter of fact, they're with him right now. Um, And so it was, I too find myself sometimes having to like sit back and remember my mom because I'm not in that same place situation that she was yeah. in and sometimes I take that for granted and it's times like this when I kind of either look at you know my my sailors that are struggling or friends that are struggling or you know looking at this here that kind of reminds me like I'm so grateful that I didn't have to necessarily have those issues um yeah. but that's not a lot of people's stories for real it, it's a lot of people out here that's trying to make it do what it do on their own and a lot of times they find where when I make the joke about like stay in the Navy like sometimes that's not even an option (laughs) because you're struggling so much with trying to compete with the Navy's mission and then you know trying to be a parent and being a mom or whatever like sometimes those are just conflicting and it's just like they feel like they just got to get out in order to you know break away from that because they want to be present in their kid's life especially if you're a single parent they don't have their father and now they don't have their mother either because i'm always gone um so that's not that's not fair to the kid like oh the navy the navy didn't issue kids in the sea bag oh well guess what (laughs) the motherfucker's here now so what now Sometimes a sometimes a hot girl summer could lead to a lot of cold it winters. A whole you know? it's like, no, I'm, just cold winters. I'm just joking. I'm, I'm just messing around, y'all. Oh, to the woman's to the woman's panel, you know, don't kill me for that. You know? like, oh, I'm gonna ask them like, what did you think about Domo's comment? That, that was a that was a straight up joke. Straight, like that was not true at all. But that but, uh, hey, yeah, I feel bad. I feel no, I, that you know, is true. That, that's very true. Out. Sometimes that shit can have a lasting impression. <laughs> <laughs> can have a lasting Last an impression, We're like damn, you know. Yeah, Jody, like, Jody then bailed on your ass. Right, man. Jody took it, took it to <laughs> Jody then took it to another military housing establishment. <laughs> man. Um, but Air Force. but I want to get what? back to back to what you said. Something that you said um, when you were talking about you watched your mom struggle, and so like you have like this. You I ha- ain't saying I watched her struggle. Well, you watched her do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You watched her do it in spite of, and so you kind of look at it but like she did struggle. <laughs> you know what? You no, struggle, ma. No, because I know I'm, I'm, I'm on your ass, ma. You struggle though. You struggle, ma. Don't be putting but, mama on blast. But, yeah, I watched her do it though. Teach. I'm listening to you. Saying, yeah, yeah. So it's like um, I've had that conversation with my boys because they did have to see a part of me where I did have to hustle because I had a household to maintain. Their dad. Yeah. He had his household to maintain. And then I had this one that I had to maintain. Mm -hmm. And so they had to see me 
hustle and, you know, I'm preparing to get out and trying to figure out this whole business thing. So they had to see me struggling. I had a conversation with my boys um, when I went home for Christmas and I told them like, although you saw me being strong and pushing through and getting it done, I don't want you to look at women and think that women are supposed to be this hard body women. Like, I don't want you to look at women like that. Like, I want you to look at your wife and you want her to have a a softer life. Don't be expecting for her to be like working her ass off and working harder than you. Like, you're still the man. So, yeah, I I, I completely agree with you saying that. And and I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that. Because a a lot of people don't realize that a lot, especially in this is when it goes to like dating. A lot of men don't realize when they're trying to pick their mates, they're trying to pick somebody based off of what the super woman that they saw in their mom. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to have to like work hard. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't want to have to be hard because that brings on a, bit a different mentality for me. I don't want to be the man in a relationship. I don't want to be, you know, the... I don't want to be the masculine one in the house. I want to be the feminine one in the house. And so, um, yeah, when y'all out here, like trying to find y'all mate, don't be looking for nobody that's going to be like, oh, well, I saw my mama do it. (laughs) She did it and she didn't complain about it. Yes, she did. She cried every fucking night on her pillow while your ass was asleep. Mm. Yeah, that's good points, man, Tish. Thank you. That's my rant. That's thank you for watching you, my TED Talk. I had to shut up. I had to let that <laughs> thank you for watching my TED Talk. <laughs> Listen, they can oh. be hard. <laughs> yeah. I had to let that happen, you know. So Air Force, right? They trying to get retirees back. Absolutely and honestly, fucking not. <laughs> yeah. Um, but honestly, Tish, I'm, I ain't even joking about it for me, right? I ain't even joking about it this time because at this point, man, like, we need people. Like, um, they saying that they need people. Uh, we looking to plug critical staffing holes and, and also facing renewed tensions in the Middle East and, poss- and the possibility of conflict with China. So, you know, some of the, some of the things that we, like, we don't sound funny, right? Yo, like, trying to get retirees back. That shit sound funny. Like, people chilling, they nestled in their house, living their life, doing their thing. But, um, the reason why we doing all this shit is not funny at all. Like, no. We need people. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, you know, shit about to go down. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it ain't even a, a laughing matter as far as the fact that we need people. Right. right. So, boom, that's that. Yeah. Now, my question for you. Hell is, to hell no. To the no, no, no. Uh, no. Hell yeah. to the no. <laughs> Hell to the yeah. <laughs> Mm-mm. They call you. <laughs> I'm hanging up. I'm not the one to think yeah. I am, brother. That's crazy, right? I will take 20 years of the military to be yo. You understand me? <laughs> you hit him with that. You hit him with that. I had to, you did your 20. I'm not the one to think <laughs> I am, brother. Slap. I will take 20 years of the military and beat yo. You understand me? Listen, I heard, I saw somebody in a comment on, I think it was maybe on social media or an article or something, but somebody said, if you let me keep my beard, then you might have me. <laughs> and I, I think that's the case for, I think the beard would be a retention tool. I think I like, I like, I like myself having a beard more than I don't, you mm-hmm. know, especially, especially if I'm up in weight or whatever. Like I, I like having a beard more than a face without a beard. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so I, I, I could totally understand that. You know what I mean? I could totally get that. And, you know so like, and like that disability though and, and that pension, that, that's got to stop because I'll tell you that my disability plus my pension is damn near what I made in the military. So I, I gotta, all I got to do is wake up and get that and not have to deal with all the other shit. <laughs> like, you want me to volunteer to come back to have to yeah. like wake up at early, yeah, stand duty. Yeah. Now it's and and deal with people. Once you retire, there's a different mentality that you have. 
Yeah. That clip that you play might happen for real for somebody yeah. for entire like you get out and then you come back in. That might be your menta- your mentality that you gonna have. Yeah, like, I would have demands. I would like first, oh. you know, they to be they gonna be shocked. I'm gonna be like, yo, what the bag look? What the bag look like? It gotta you know, look nice. Look like? And I need to be a CWO too. You know, just right. off back. You know, make just, me a CW, make me a warrant too. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I need my own state room. Have I go my own laptop? You know, like, <laughs> like, like we gonna be at the negotiating table. Like I didn't just me coming in. Like I need a couple. I need I need some stuff. You know right. I mean? Like how it, bad you want what me? What could get you back, Teach? What could get you back? Um, I would have to. Oof. I would Damn. have to continue to collect something. Um. I don't think they can they can keep you on disability by law. Mm-hmm. But my pension, I'm gonna need to keep that. As well as the active duty pay. Yeah. Um yeah, I'm gonna my I can't come back as an LNC. If you want me to come back, I'm gonna have to come back as something else. Yeah. Um I think you say a warrant officer, I like that idea. I I'll, I'll take that, <laughs> I'll take that warrant officer. Um and uh, like there has to be like a special auxiliary, like the the leave me the fuck alone crew. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, like and, you and, only yeah. mess with them like for special stuff. Like don't be putting no watches, all that other shit. Like it it has to be like like we gonna send you here to do this mission and this mission only, you know. And then you can you can go back. Yeah, and, and um, for, for this, for, for the Air Force to say applications must be submitted by January 31st, 2026 to serve on active duty for no more than 48 months, right? So that's that. And then it's, it's more details here. Another thing that I found crazy was that, you know, um, the Air Force reopened active duty jobs before um, from 2017 through 2021, right? Um, and it says that that program was expanded in 2018 during a 2000 pilot shortfall. And in 2019, Air Force Times found the program had only received 125 applications. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> he was like, yo, we chilling, man. But yeah, that's that. I don't think it's too much reason to stick on that for too but long. If but if they only got 125 and that was back when? That was in 2018. The economy is way different now than it was in 2018. Yeah. They're going to get even 50, less. Yeah, and that said 50. Remember, they needed 2,000 pilots. So they set out that 125, 50 of them was pilots. And I, I, I think them retired pilots living good, man. Yeah, they, they are. You know, they, they living good, man. They ain't trying to you know, come back. But I, I hope we get what we need because we need. You yeah. know what I mean? So that's the, that's the big thing with that is we need. Yeah. Um, a real quick thing that I saw was um, skip the trip for IDs, right? So... Skip the trip for IDs. About a million people with uh, uniform services IDs are now eligible to renew ID cards online. And speaking of retirees, right, that's retirees, reservists, spouses, and dependents. They can file their request online and receive new IDs by mail. Um, that's great. And that's a pilot program. I said it, that expands a pilot program from February 2023 to allow uniform sponsors with a CAC to request online renewals of U.S. ID cards. So that's that. That's that's straight right there. Because, you know, a lot of people, they retire and they don't live close to a military base anymore. Mm-hmm. And they have to truck themselves back to a base and, you know, in order to get a new ID card. And so with this, you can just go online and you can apply online. And you, I think you just have to make sure that your DEERS is updated or something like that. But I, I, that's dope. Yeah. That's dope. Could I like do it. it. Kids could do it. Yeah. It's easier. A lot of people think we doing this stuff to cater to people or for retention and some of this stuff. But I think some of these things, and I'm not specifically talking about this, but I think some of these things we doing is just like well overdue. Mm-hmm. Like just updating things that's just, we got people in there that's like, yo, this is just old. And right. Like, hey, let's just, let's kind of get caught up with the times. Right. Like, you know, that's like, you know, that's kind of my thoughts on that. Speaking of just things that I don't even, I don't even got a good segue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, it's more commanders being getting fired, man. Like, and we, we ain't gonna stick to this too long because we it's talk about it all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's always a story, man. Like, you know, and I, I really don't want to always focus on that because mm-hmm. 
it's, it's always going to keep happening. Like everybody get in trouble, everybody get, you know, things happen. But it's more commanders being fired, right? So you got the one army colonel fired for kissing and groping uh, subordinates, right? Um, that's, that's crazy. You know what I mean? She grabbing people up, kissing them and all that stuff, right? Um, and, and that's another one of them where the woman's story, I was the about, whole details. Um, I was about to there. say, because the last one, they just said loss of confidence. And it was a guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it just said loss of confidence. That's it. And then it even says, we don't know. We got to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Loss of confidence. The mm-hmm. lady groping dudes, kissing them, all types of stuff. I don't understand. I just find it funny. I'm not I, trying to drive know, a I, narrative or nothing. I, you I know, just find it funny. Since you pointed it out, though, I've been paying closer attention. And it is very true. We gon' listen on permission to speak freely. We gonna keep looking it up. You know, I'm gonna make a tracker. I ain't doing it. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a tracker. To the fellas, I ain't doing it, fellas. <laughs> I'm making you know a I mean? tracker because like, I feel like every time it's a, now that you've said it, I'm gonna call it the Domo Initiative. <laughs> no, nah, don't put my name on it. You know, to the fellas. You know, we got uh, Domo don't put my Initiative. Name on it. <laughs> yeah, I'm but doing let's research. Get, let's move toward the Howard. So the Howard, they relieved two COs in six months, right? So again, like we said, we ain't sticking to this stuff too long. A lot of COs getting fired. How Howard removed COs, two COs in six months, right? And one of them, again, so this was one, right? It was the loss of confidence in the ability to perform duties, right? I think that's like Article 92 for COs. Like that's like, yo, it that's is. what you, you know, that's just, that's it, it's, right? Because, yeah, yeah. It, it well, So, yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah, now, it's, yeah. I don't want to get all the way into the legal stuff, but yeah. Oh, yeah. So, you know, yeah, you got, yeah. You it's, got, you no, got it's teams. just that, like, when it comes to, the, it's a detachment for cause. When it comes to that, there's certain reasons in there. And so you have to pick a reason. And it's not yeah. like the, UC, the UCMJ. So it's like yeah. loss of confidence. Blah, blah, blah. You know, and most of it is always going to fall on a loss of confidence. I forget what the other ones are because it's been so long. It, it ain't been that long, but it's been long enough that I don't, I data dump that shit. But yeah, so it's not like a UCMJ type thing. It's, it's under the DFC. If you ever want to just, for the listeners, if you ever want to just figure out how this, all this stuff happens, you can go look at the um, Mill Purse Man for Detachment for Cause and it'll tell you why it always says um, loss of confidence and stuff. Like you can see all the different categories. Yeah. So two CEOs fired from one ship in a six month span. I wonder how that crew is doing. Right. <laughs> Probably not the greatest. Right. No. But uh, this one of these times the CEO was fired. I think it was the second CEO that was fired. It was a soft grounding. Right. So, mm-hmm. so, so, <laughs> so a soft grounding of a ship. Right. Now, the funny part is they were pulling in a ba- Bali, right? So <laughs> that's a nice, a nice place to go, right? A nice little right. vacation place. People mm-hmm. got overnight liberty, mm-hmm. nice little resorts. That, that's a long night, you know. For I think that's a long night for a CO. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The, the, the soft ground your ship. So the soft grounding bit for my civilians, right? That means like the ship got a little stuck. You know what I mean? They need yeah. a little. They got to wiggle out. You got. <laughs> you got to wiggle this shit out a little bit. You know what I mean? To get you know to get the ship. Back, you know, up and running, and you could do that without messing up the ship or hurting anybody. But, it, but it's embarrassing, you know, to have your ship like stuck a little, like wedged, mm-hmm, a little, little wedge. Like, I can't. can't, can't yeah, we about to go to Bali. Reef. <laughs> <laughs> about to, yeah, stuck right, in a know? reef. <laughs> we about to go to Bali. Yeah. <laughs> Hold up, y'all. We, we we got stuck a little bit. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, but, but you, um, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, as a CEO, like, do you just pack your shit up? <laughs> like, yeah. It's like, after the soft grounding, do you just be like, yeah, it's over. Like, I'm going to go ahead and flip the uh, picture down to the family, put that in my uh, luggage and get ready to get relieved or what? Oh. Uh, well, it said. Well, it said that he was relieved. You mean like going yeah, yeah, home? That's what I'm saying. Like, if you saw, like, in the moment you saw, like, oh, when that shit you just, stuck, like, hey, yeah, you, like, you, yeah, you, yeah. Like, <laughs> hey, uh, uh, we're not moving. All right, let me go hit the stage room ahead. and start cleaning <laughs> let up. Go, let me get, get my, my box. Anybody yeah, got a paper box? <laughs> <laughs> I need to start packing yep. my shit up. I got to get up out of here. Man. Yeah. I'm, pr- I'm pretty crazy. sure words were said. Um, a, a whole bunch of f bombs was dropped. Probably found him crying in his stateroom. Um, yeah, yeah, that's pretty yeah, bad. That's crazy. Yeah, but you know, so I was um when I was on the BHR, 
Well, I was with ESG7 and we would embark on the BHR. We went to Bali and yeah. apparently like Bali has like these reasons. So we had to kind of like, I don't know what you call it, docking out, I guess, way out in the water. And they had to bring these boats to you come get us. Out? What do you call it? Um, like anchor, like, anchor out, anchor out. I said docking out. Listen, listen. Okay. Hey, y'all. A lot. I want y'all to know for the new listeners, man. You don't got out. that much sea time. Y'all. I don't so have that much sea time. time. And, and I'm so removed that all of the sea terms and the ship terms, yeah. it, that was the first thing to go. Yeah. My East Wasp pin, all that knowledge was the first thing to go after I retired. That was first. So, I don't remember so none of that So a Liberty shit. launch. It was like a Liberty yeah, launch, right? The Liberty they, had, they brought these little Liberty y'all. boats out and it was rocky and shit and we was trying to get on there and I almost died, I felt like. But yeah, so I can see how, I can see how that would happen um, yeah. in Bali. But not with Mm -hmm. all the fucking technology (laughs) that they got on the ship. (laughs) And seeing how it could happen don't matter with that CO about to get fired. No, but you know. No, but you know it's It's in Bali. It's in Bali, though. (laughs) Your ass got to go, doggy. You see right here this (laughs) reef. (laughs) Listen, he should have been like, everybody coming with me. QMs? Who's the QM? Don't they? They (laughs) usually get in trouble too, right along with them. Uh, nah, they usually right there with them. Somebody got to. The old is in there yeah. looking at the monitor. Don't don't they? Shouldn't they sit on the monitor? Whoever, everybody coming. I wonder do CMCs like get to go talk to the captain, but like why are they packing up? <laughs> is that like a thing, or do you just want to leave them be? Like, like I'm gonna let them. I'm gonna let them take care. Like, of this, Terry, you know? It was an honor to serve with you. Like, like anything I, I, I can do. <laughs> I would not want to walk off the ship with a box like. <laughs> Like a box, that's just a ba- like that just like solidify the the, the firing, you know right? I mean? The box, like <laughs> somebody just pack up my office and bring it to me. Yeah, yeah, like yo, can you see? Talk to the XO, like you know, XO already acted brand new, you know what I right, mean? Right, because like, he know he know. about to fleet up. <laughs> yeah, he about, you know, unless you know, unless your strike group, unless you know, somebody come, but like XO acting brand new, like he, you know, he, he, his conversation ain't that, you know, ain't that much for you though, boy. <laughs> Business. <laughs> It's business as usual. You know what I'm saying? He already like, don't start taking over. I'm about to change yeah. this and this yep. and this. <laughs> yep. In front of the crew, though. In front of the crew, man. He's going to be, you know, so good about the CO. Yeah. That well. He was tired of some of the bullshit. He yep. was ready to take over. Yep. You know, but yeah, you know, in, you know um, in the civilian sector, like these companies, they actually will fire you on your day off and mm-hmm. then hire a company to come pack up your office. Yeah, that's cool. That's crazy. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that's so, yeah, I'm sure. Like, don't bring your... You yeah. fired. Don't bring your ass back in here. We'll mail your shit to you. That's crazy. You don't even got control. Yeah, because people be trying to stay in the office remembering the times. You know what I mean? Like, reminiscing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I fired my first employee right here. This was the spot. We hit the games. <laughs> like, now, nah, get your ass up out of here. You cool. You don't need to grab nothing. You know, we got security right there. They going to walk you out. Yep. You know, your parking pass right after you pull out. Yeah. You taking that, just leave that with the person at the gate. Yeah. And we going to bring you And we going to bring yeah. your stuff. That they probably had somebody pack up that CO stuff. Poor guy. Yeah, yeah. Poor guy. Yeah, bring it to him. Um, Marines are saying only one third of our amphibious fleet is deployable. Navy is saying that that's cap. <laughs> but the Marines got receipts. <laughs> and this is the benefit of having a military podcast. <laughs> we can talk plain talk. Is it a little bit of smoke from the Marines? So hey. do, does top Marine brass have smoke with top Navy brass? And is Navy capping and bullshitting? Find out next week on Permission to Speak Freely podcast. <laughs> now, but uh, if you check the link in that, if you check the link in um in our description, our episode description. You'll see more about it. I don't have much on it. I don't know. If I could bet anything, I would bet that the Navy is capping and the Marines did all of the research. They got independent researchers to figure this out and all this shit. Anyway, it's bad. And I think if if we not keeping it real, we need to keep. So pretty much all the Navy said is that like we remain focused on presenting the <laughs> fleet of possibility for 
amphibious. You know how how they do that shit. That we remain focused. Whenever you the hear PAOs that, PAOs working, working overtime, <laughs> yeah. trying to come yeah. up with something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we remain focused and keep a priority of. It's not like a yes. It's like, hey, do, do, do we got enough amphibious ships to get Marines where they need to need to go? It's we like were, talking to you, talking we were, to like talking to like my wife was like, they didn't like a yes or no question. This was a yes or no question. Do we got enough amphibious boats or not? We remain focused <laughs> on prevent on presenting the most available. Like, yo, give me the answer. You know what I'm saying? So, but that's where we are with it though, Tish. I don't yeah. know uh, more about that. That's high level military stuff. And that's shit that I don't even know why it's public news. Like we need to figure that shit out. Right. So it's, it's, it's a war on the horizon, man. Right. Like, you showing all of our, yeah. <laughs> all of our, uh, our uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Weaknesses. Our weak, our weak spots. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't even be. I wouldn't even be reporting it if it wasn't already public. Like right. you might as well just talk about it. Maybe somebody listening and they could provide some clarity, or we could figure this out. We need amphibious. Uh, we need amphibious craft to get Marines where they need to go. We need to be able to uh, transport our. Uh, sibling service. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like this, is cra- this is crazy. In yeah. my opinion. <laughs> like, let's I figure wanna, this out. I want to know why he even brought it up <laughs> in a public forum. They mad. <laughs> you know, like, they, w- when you start doing independent investigations, like, like you, you mad. Like, that's like hiring a, a, a private eye on your spouse. Like, right. Like, nah, hey, look. <laughs> hey, do you want the Navy to know this happening? Nah, no. figure it out. Let us know that we're going to bring this up in time. They probably tired of getting capped. Yeah, like yep. I, I don't know, but yeah, this is just it ain't right. You know what I mean? Let's figure this out, Navy, and let's let the Marines know what's going on. You know, or they're gonna whoop right. your ass with this dude right here, this nah, lieutenant he look, general he look for real. He yeah, for real. <laughs> he looked like he yeah. whooped somebody's ass for real. <laughs> yeah, he looked he look, he, he for real. Don't nobody want to hand to hand with him, man. Head up. <laughs> That's he Major Payne right, right there. Yeah, he, 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 right <laughs> he got the Marine cut. Because, you know, the Marines, they really lay off. They cut uh, they, anyway. Like, this is the same haircut. Like, <laughs> his hair just you, don't even grow around <laughs> there no more. 20, whether you 20 or 55. You know, he got the, the same, same cut. <laughs> same cut. And it works as you're losing hair. Like, yeah. their style, the style they cut it. Still works, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Like you could be, you could be bald in the middle, but them arches, they still they come still up. come. Yeah, because listen, <laughs> I can see home the top of homeboy's head. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> that thing is thin. Yeah. But yeah. He, he but, but he still got thin. the curvature. The uh, he still got the meniscus. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's good to go. But um, yeah. So Navy, figure it out. Um, because we need. We need them and they need us. So whatever the fuck is going on over yeah. there, that's high level military stuff. We need to figure that Look out. Look at Nesco, figure that shit out too. Yeah. <laughs> the ones who fix our shit. They need oh, to- Na- you said NASCO? NASCO, yeah. Yeah. They, they, they're they the ones who are supposed to be fixing our ship and shit. They still be breaking down. Like, come on now. We yeah. need new contracts, yeah. maybe. Maybe we need some new contracts. And maybe needs to stop signing these long ass contracts because as soon as these people get these contracts, they don't like like it. It goes to shit every time. Just like with the uh, the housing, what is it, Lincoln mm-hmm. Lincoln Military Lincoln? Housing yeah. had mold and shit. They had like we were locked into like a fifty year contract or some shit. Like we ain't getting out of that, and they ain't fixing the mold. So <laughs> yeah. we need to start holding these people to these contracts because they they get it, and then it's just like it they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And there's no reason why I've I read a couple investigations where um, it's been like a NASCO issue. Like, all right, uh-huh. that NASCO came out and fixed the shit or, you know, they supposed to did something or whatever. And, and it's fucking broke still, or it breaks right after. Um, just like with E-Nafit, <laughs> we spent all that yeah. fucking money on E-Nafit and it's still fucking broke. Like, come on. Yeah. Shout, shout out to uh, Skillcraft though, because you know Skillcraft been with us forever. Forever, you know them pens still going strong. Yeah, I'd rather have a Skillcraft than a fancy joint. Give me a Skillcraft. Yeah. So shout like, out. Do to I them. have one here? I might have. Yeah, you, you probably got. some. I probably got a couple crafts. of them here. Yeah, I like I like me a good old Skillcraft. Yeah. So troops are still waiting for off base mental health appointment, right? I'm not going to read too much about this. It's a whole article, but it is two um, paragraphs that really stand out. 
This is the first. It says, within the military health system, the average patient was seen for an urgent appointment within 12 hours in 2022, while it takes about 15 days for a routine appointment, well within the requirements of 24 hours for a crisis and 28 days for routine care, right? But those standards don't apply to troops who are sent off base. And GAO found that many of them are waiting much longer for appointments. From Data from 2022 shows that the average service member waited between 17 and 23 days for an urgent appointment, exponentially longer than would be allowed on base and more like 30 days for routine care, right? So another thing, it pretty much says that um, the military, like, you know, we tell, it says military health systems, major shortage behavioral health providers, which often send service members off base to seek care from civilian providers as they wait for spots to open up at a military treatment facility. But the Defense Health Agency doesn't track whether service members in crisis are receiving timely care out in town, uh, making it impossible to ensure that troops are getting the help they need or fix any issues they have with obtaining care. So it's like, hey, you could go out in town. Mm-hmm. Boom. You know, that's it. Yeah. That's the end of the story. You could go out in town. Yeah. You know, so. Um, I, so we had to have some emergency care for my oldest son some years back. And we were trying to go out in town. It was hard. I couldn't get anybody to answer the phone. It was taking forever to get a phone call back. And actually, when I was trying to call these places, it wasn't even at the emergency. Um, it wasn't at the emergency stage quite yet, but it was on the cusp. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't get anybody on the line to even get any type of care. The very next week was when the emergency happened. And I was in the ER um, out in town at Rady's Children's. And they were the ones that were like, you have to say these trigger words in order to get them to respond right away. And so I did that and then I was able to get the care, but that's just crazy that you have to like say certain things. And I thought what I was saying was fine. (laughs) What I was saying was enough, but it wasn't. Um, So I've experienced myself with a kid, but I can only imagine how it is with adults too, um, with trying to get, you know, care out in town for emergencies. Um, the providers I see are great. So I don't, I haven't had any issues um, with that. Even while I was on Acquisita, I was seeing the same one. So, you know, find, you got to find somebody that's a good one. But yeah, we giving, we're, these um, companies, again, when we go back to the money, we giving them this, this money, you know, we're allowing service members to go out in town and TRICARE is paying for it. And so TRICARE can really be real stingy and be like, hey, if you don't see these people in a certain time frame, then we're going to pull pull people back and we're not going to refer anybody to you. Everybody want to get on the DOD referral list. Yeah, I, um, I said this before, or like a long time ago on one of our pods, I'm going to say it again. I just don't think that anybody that offers any kind of health care should be tainted by the processes um, that they have in place. Mm-hmm. I think when you start when you start getting tainted and feeling like you've been there and done that and you heard it all before, mm-hmm. I think it's time for you to go and get a new job. Yeah. Like, honestly. Yeah. Because um, different people are affected by different things differently, right? So with, and I'm responding to you talk about the trigger words. Mm-hmm. I don't think it should be fucking trigger words. Right. I think that they shouldn't. If somebody say they want service, they need service, they need service, they should at least get screened and evaluated. Right. I understand also that we probably don't have enough people. I was to about to say that, yeah. People and things like that. And, you know, maybe that job market needs better recruitment or, you know, stuff like that. But it's just crazy. But I know it's people out there that need jobs that I don't think have them. You, mm-hmm. know, you know what I mean? Like, it's people that's not getting hired and jobs and, you know, stuff like that. So I don't know what, like, I went to the ID. If you need a job, hey, if you need a job, go to the ID office in Portsmouth. I went to the ID office in Portsmouth, <laughs> the Dares office in Portsmouth. The day it was one person working there. Like, how did, <laughs> I said, how did it get to just being you? And she was like, uh, I don't know. I mean, we need people, you know, mm. but uh, back to, you know, back to the other thing. Yeah. Like, I just, like, we can't just be pawning 
you know, the responsibility of uh, mental health care to civilians and then not being able to offer any kind of like, well, ask for any kind of opinion on if sellers are getting the help, you know, that they, they need. need. Yeah. And maybe we maybe it's crazy because we need people. So I would say maybe if we create a transitional pr- program for people that's getting out, if they want to get into that field, but we need people in. So that ain't, you know, that wouldn't happen. <laughs> I mean, that <laughs> you know wouldn't be, saying, but, that wouldn't be yeah. bad though. Um, because yeah. who better than them? Because they've been in that environment before, it. you yeah. know? And so I think that would be, that would be dope to be yeah, able like to some, put somebody some on that type of career path. And you know, yeah. Yeah. Some yeah. Kind of apprenticeship. Yeah. But who like I just hope that's another thing. Again, that's just news for the listeners. And I hope that I hope we find a fix for and maybe that's something that we make some people aware of that they wasn't track. Right. So my do better is section leaders, right? Um, section leaders. This ain't all y'all, but just some of y'all, man. Um, you know, leave some space on your eval for your primary duty. <laughs> you, know, like, <laughs> you know, some of these section leaders be like, you like damn near Napoleon of the duty section. Mm. You, know what I mean? like, you don't got to do all that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we putting out, man, I was at one duty section turnover, man. My man was talking for 25, 30 minutes. You know, oh. it ain't like these, these things that we've been talking to our sellers about already. You know mm. what I mean? Like, make sure you check their shaves. You know what I mean? Yo, this, this, the, this, the, the, this duty section, dog, this ain't quarters. Right? You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't everybody, damn chief. You know, you just are section leader. Mm. <laughs> Keep it like that, man. You know, um, but seriously, like y'all, 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 um, stop that, man. You know what I mean? Like, I get it. You a duty today, man. You got the helm. You know what I mean? But that's it. You know, somebody <laughs> else could be on duty tomorrow, man. People be trying to, I'm telling you, like, people be wanting to fill up they eval with this duty section. And uh, I can't really explain it, but I know there's some people out there that's going to relate. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you ain't just a section leader, man. You an ET. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yep. do your job as an ET, dog. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like this is all like, I do. Yeah, like you the section leader extraordinaire. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's cool. It's cool, baby. It's cool. You know? <laughs> some over some overly eager section leaders, you know. Like I said, I ain't gonna get too deep into explaining that. Just 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 uh just take it easy, y'all. Take take it easy, section leaders. Yeah. Every muster with the duty section don't gotta be 30 minutes. It ain't it ain't it ain't that much information. Mm-hmm. You, know? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's it. That's all I got. That's my that's my little do do better. It ain't a big one. You know, I I would say that my do better is me. So I need you to do better is always you. I, you know, I'm always finding I'm I'm a self accountable person. You know, I figured out yesterday that I need to be a better um, non military employee because. I'm so used to the Navy way of doing things that I've I've noticed that I'm transferring that into the civilian side. And um, and it's like uh so our IT guy, you know, I, I just get there and so he I, I I have my desk, they already have it set up. I have monitors, two monitors. You know, it ain't all that, but they straight. And they're like, yeah, we're going to get you some new monitors because those look old and they look ugly. I'm like, all right, cool. So they brought the monitors. They, he went and got the new monitors, brand new, still in the box. The IT guy brings it. Um, and I take the box from him and start opening it <laughs> so mm-hmm. I can put the shit together myself. And he's just looking at me like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, and he's just standing at the door, and he's just looking, and he's like, and the, uh, somebody else walks by, and he's like, yeah, I think she should have it on her resume, and I look up, and I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> 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 I was like, my bad, my bad, but I I found myself doing stuff like that, and I'm really having to work on it and be like that's not my job. Like, that's what mm-hmm. I'm, I keep putting in my head. Like, that's not my job. That's not in my PD. That's going to become like my thing. Yeah, that's PD, not in my PD. By that. 
Y'all live and die by that PD. Right, right. They do. And it used to get on yeah. my damn nerves when I was when I was active duty. And now yeah. I'm like, okay, I, I, I need to embody that's not in my PD. I ain't doing that. So, so you still work with active duty? No. Okay, so it's all Mm-mm. civilians. Nope, it's all civilians. Y'all got a cheese mess? Nope. Don't get one. Don't, <laughs> don't be the one that bring it to the command. Bring it to, <laughs> to, the, to, to, to the office. Right. Uh, we should do a cheese mess and I want to be the president. I know. I was already talking mm. to um, one of the workers today and she was saying that her husband is in the Navy. And he and I'll start at, oh, what ship is he on? And where is he stationed? And I was like, oh, why do I want to know so bad? Like, I just want to know, like, where where is he stationed? Where what ship is he on? Oh, okay, got it, got it, got it. I just need to just let it go. I had a dude at my job tell somebody, stop calling him Master Chief. You know, like, <laughs> like, like, yo, I ain't in no more. Like, you have to check the person. Like, yo, stop at my old job. Hey, stop calling me Master Chief. Yeah, I can see where that would be when you get out and you come right back. Yeah, I can see where that would be a thing. I'm Rodney. Stop yeah. calling me Master Chief. My, my name is Rodney. Rodney White. Right. You know what I mean? Like, but like, crazy you know, thing, but, I was called Chief Bing on my first day because when I walk in, um, the guy who let me in the door, he took me back to um, the other paralegal and I actually knew her from when I worked at Regent, she was a civilian. I trained her mm-hmm. um, when she worked at the Regent building downtown, Navy Region Southwest. And so I'm looking at her like she looks familiar. She was like, Chief Bing. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. You had to tell her like, yo, I'm Tish. Right? I was like, Teach. oh, Call shit. Teach, and she actually sits like right behind me. So we did a bunch of catching up and everything and, mm-hmm. you know, trying to figure out who is where and every, all that stuff. So that was that was cool to see a familiar face when I got there. That was cool. Small Navy. Yeah, super duper small. Yeah. So we got some scattered, a couple of little scattered thoughts before we get out of here. This episode probably it's look like it's gonna be long. But we got a couple, what, a couple of scattered thoughts, right, Tish? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was thinking about like one of my pet peeves when I was active dude, you know, I'm an LN or whatever, right? And so we just used to have to deal with a lot of legal issues. And one of the ones that used to aggravate me the most, I think, was like when spouses would call into the command and be like, my husband is cheating on me or my wife is cheating on me. It's like, uh, we really got other things that we trying to worry about. They be wanting us to launch like full blown investigations Mm -hmm. to look into their spouse cheating. Like you go get a private investigator. We are not here to fix your relationship. Like, I just don't, I don't like just if you go and divorce this person, then just take it to civilian court and divorce them. Like, why are you bringing it to us? We, yeah. the Navy does not want to, like, we ain't trying to get into all that. Like, it just used to be so aggravating. So aggravating. Cause it's like, oh, she's enraged or he's enraged or whatever. They mad or, oh, God. It's, they stop. Tell them, they tell please. Them. Please stop. <laughs> unless it's like nothing like just stop just stop like handle your shit on your own do not bleed that shit over into the military side of the house um, we really only use adultery as a tack on charge um, and for those who don't know what a tack on charge means if somebody's getting charged with something else and oh by the way they're married like they it's fraternization between them and another sailor. And oh, by the way, this person is married. So not only were you fraternizing with somebody, but you're fraternizing while you were married. So we're tacking on that. So we typically only used it as a tack on charge. Like for real, for real, like <laughs> just keep that shit. Like y'all handle that on y'all own because ain't nobody about to be your private investigator for your marriage. And you only going to go back with them anyway. And mm. he's reduced. <laughs> so mm. if you're not going to leave him, let that man cheat in peace. Because <laughs> mm. I don't want the extra work. <laughs> yeah, that was Tish, y'all. Was Happy tea. Valentine's Day. <laughs> you know, another another foul thing that I'm going to get into is these recruiters. I heard some foul shit about recruiting from recruiters. From former recruiters, they told me some foul shit. We ain't going to talk about it right now. 
There's a lot of topics I didn't say we was going to come back to that we never came back to. But mm. I need to record. I need to talk to y'all about filling these quotas for jobs. You know mm. what I mean? I heard some stuff about that. Like, yo, such and such saying that Navy Training Command saying that we need X amount of ABEs. So if you get a DC man in there, somebody want to be a DC man, you're like, well, did you ever think about the ABE job? You know, but I, I did, because I, I asked my bad, I was like, so what'd you do when they came in with like parents that was in the military? He was like, yo, you clam up a little bit. You, mm-hmm. you, you got to change your approach. So I got to talk to y'all recruiters for that file stuff y'all be up to. I need, we need a recruit up here. We're going to have some fun though. Don't, don't be super defensive. We're going to have some fun. But what you, what you was just talking about, Tish, I ain't got nothing to add. I ain't got nothing to add to that, man. That's, you know, that, it is what it is. Cause that's like people calling a command about people cheating with people that ain't even from the, it ain't even like they cheating with somebody from the command. It's right. just that they cheating, period. They right. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't got nothing to, I don't got nothing to add to that, man. Like, we ain't trying to do nothing to that. But I, I got a question about Mel, cause, and this kind of all sprung up from the conversations that came out of, the clip from our episode about the pregnancy nav admin. And my question is this, what is your thought on male sellers going home for the births of their children? Like, like have, like being able to leave a deployment to watch their child give birth. I mean, watch their mom give birth to their child, watch <laughs> their, their child wife, being, girlfriend, yeah, whoever. Yeah, yeah give, watch the child, child. What's your, what's your thoughts on that? I think that is Great. Like, I think we should be supporting that as much as possible. Like, 100%? Like, if so, if it's going to cost the government money, then maybe not. Um, But I know there's like a lot of times SEALs will like find ways to like get somebody beachside. Maybe they they go beachside and they have to do something else as well while they're there. They bring something back, whatever, whatever. Like there's a way around it. And I think that that just helps to build morale because I can't imagine as a man, my child being born and I'm not there. You know, I would, I feel like I would respect the command, the CO and my job in the Navy a lot more if, you know, that was something that I could do. And if somebody, that, there was somebody there making that happen. Send that man home. We got nine months to plan this. Right. We got nine months. Right. Send that man home. Let him witness the birth of his child. That's something. Um, you, that's you can, my thoughts You on can't that. get that moment back. Send him you home. Know? Let him witness the birth of his child. I get yeah. it. He got a critical NEC. We had nine months to plan this. Let's fly somebody in. Even if he can't stay that long. Right. You know, let's fly somebody in for the time being. Send that man home for a week or two. Mm-hmm. If he got like, and I think it should be more, but if it's a critical and they say, okay, I get it. Send that man home to watch the baby come out of his, you know, spouse, right. wife, girlfriend, whoever it is. Send him home. Right. Let him go home. You know, that's, I, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't unless the person was at war. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But outside of that, get him home to see the birth. A lot of dudes are upset because that's not really prioritized. You know, I know COs, be taking care of sellers and stuff like that. But this dude's upset because based off an- anecdotal information, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? That's not prioritized. Right. Like, like they, I've seen a lot of sellers not be able to go home. Yeah, I me mean, too. I was on an LCS deployment and that ain't even a real deployment. Right. You know what I mean? Like, Celsius, man. Like, yeah. we off the coast of California. Like, it take two hours to get this boat back in. Right. Man, you know what I mean? Like, right. Like, let that, let that CS on. go home. Man. Yeah. Like, you know, it was, sure. it was a CS2 on there. It's baby. Like, the dude's coming home to six month old kids and they ain't get to experience or help their wife through any of the beginning of the, you know, experience of childhood and rearing the kid and all that. I think, in my opinion, I think it's crazy that that would even be a question if it was a, a situation where they could go home. Right. Send that. Send yeah. that man home. Man. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Send him home. What's up with these fundraisers, T? I don't even remember. Fuck. <laughs> that wasn't, was that a Damon <laughs> That was topic? mine. No, that was mine, but I don't remember what it was. I don't remember what it All was. Right. So, so my question for you is this. Should, should a SO, if... All right, so some commands for seller of the year, you can nominate people that wasn't seller of the quarter, right? Mm-hmm. And this came up, um, I forgot After who After the, um, I, I think I did, a, I did a story, but I shared a story from, uh, 
I think it was J Bell. It was from yeah. um it was it was who Jay Z. Yeah, Jay Z. It was Jay Z. No, I didn't hear you saying Jay Z. My bad. It was Jay Z. No, I'm saying like it's cool. It's Jay Z. But 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 it's Jay Z. Like yeah. What else? What else you got? No, I was just about to say like like when some I was just about to explain it. So when um having to say little quarter or having a Sailor of the Year nominee that, and they've never been Say Little Quarter. That's what it was saying. Yeah, they didn't like win that. in yeah. one of those quarters. Yeah. Um, you think that they should have won in one of the quarters? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because during that, during those quarters, you had the best of the best. Now let those four go up for it. For uh, and at least be nominated. But you got people who ain't never been nominated or selected as Say Little Quarter and they going up for Say Little Year? Now, I've seen commands that uh, have like, you you still submit the ones that was of the quarter, but you could also add like one more that was a well, nominee. Why wouldn't they add it? Why weren't they a part of any of the nominations or for Say Little, for Say Little Quarter? I, I, so you cut me off, right? My bad. Let me let me let me, let me, let me calm down. I, yeah, I, I said I said one that was a nominee, mm-hmm. but didn't make it. You know, didn't didn't win. Like I, I've seen commands that had nom seller the quarter nominees mm-hmm. go up for seller the year. I can right? I can I can get with that. Right. So you submit one of the ones who won, and one of the ones that wasn't. I've seen that happen. Mm-hmm. But I mean, yours is about people that wasn't even nominated. Not wasn't right? even nominated. At all, all year long for not noun quarter. So should it be a minimum, a minimum amount of time that you need to be at a command to even be considered to be? Because that got to that got to be coupled with that, right? That mm-hmm. got to be coupled with it. Because, for instance, like the sell of the quarter for quarter four, um, is you know should be nominated for seller of the year, right? And mm-hmm. that's just, those awards are presented around the same amount of time, right? But a seller that just showed up around quarter four and working circles around all these, you know, people that, you know, they probably not, you know, didn't get denied. So, but they shouldn't be nominated for seller of the year. Maybe they got to wait. Like, so basically what I'm saying is, I guess it should be a time constraint yeah. as well. Right. Like usually you, there you is. Had to have been at the, it, it normally is. Yeah. You would have had to have been at the command for like six months. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Usually it is. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. I, I, don't, I don't disagree. I just was asking questions, trying to play devil's advocate. But, <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. You, you, uh, you should, you should have, you should be a seller of the quarter to get seller of the year. You should, or you or know. at least a nominee. Yeah, yeah, I like the nominee thing. I like the nominee thing as well, but I can understand somebody that don't like the nominee thing mm-hmm. either. Yeah, I can like, understand it too. I, I think at yeah, the they, bare they minimum, more. you start with: Do we are we going to allow someone? who's a nominee, but I don't think it should ever be a question of if no one is, if someone has never been nominated as a say little quarter, um, then why are we waiting until say the year? And if they just got there, how the hell are they running circles around everybody? Like that's, that's a you problem could, all in itself though. You could, you could, you could just get to a command and run circles around everybody. You just got there. Yeah, you could still run circles around everybody. But you just got there. There's no lin- yeah, longevity. Yeah, I, I get it. But somebody, <laughs> like you ain't somebody, burnt somebody out short yet. duty com- You ain't burnt yeah, out yet. Somebody short duty commands you could get to and run circles around everybody. Like, especially like as an E6. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, yeah, E6. Yeah. Like some of these short duty commands you could get to and everybody burned out or they, you, you just coming off C duty. So you still got that energy. Like some yeah. of these joints you could get to and you could like just plow through. The competition, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, well, that, that's this E6, you know, like kind of thought process there, but you can, yeah, you know. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. So, yeah, sell at a quarter, sell at a year. You should be a sell at a quarter or at least a nominee to get sell at a year. You shouldn't just come out of nowhere with a, with, you know, with I the would, situation. I would be pissed off if I was a sailor and yeah. somebody was not even nominated as any sailor of a quarter and now they're going up for sailor of the year, like for what. Yeah. What was your antennas yeah. <laughs> in all four yeah. of these quarters? Yeah. They should but have you, like different awards. Like right. Unsung hero. Unsung, <laughs> unsung, unsung hero. hero of the year. You know what I mean? Like, but you know, you have people 
who will just try to put people up, you know, ain't put them up all year. And now it's time for sale of the year. And now you're trying to put your person up. Nah, nah, lead them where they were. (laughs) If you didn't think highly of them all year long, don't try to do it now. Yeah. I got a question for you, Tisha. What up? It's it's weird coming from me. I already know that. So ladies, you know, just kind of give me some grace with this. Um, Because it's about, it's about tampons, right? (laughs) Um, So I know it's weird coming from me. I wish it wasn't, but I feel like somebody got to do it um, because people are listening. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? So somebody got to do it. So I was in a meeting and we talking about uh, habitability. And um, one of the in-serve like checks, and I don't know if you can answer this question or not. I hope that you can. Mm -hmm. But one of the in-serve requirements for like a burden, a burden that women live in is to have the bend for tampons, I guess it's called like like women material or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. But it's it's to have a bin. Mm-hmm. But we had a we had a lady, Master Chief, in this, you know, uh meeting and she was like, we don't use it. You know, we never use that bin. Mm-hmm. Like, um, you know, and I and I was just trying to validate, you know, so cause she was like, why don't we just take this? Like, cause, you know, some burdens might have hits. They got to fix this. They got to make sure it's installed. They might not have it. But it's like, we don't use it anyway. So why don't we just take this archaic requirement, mm-hmm. like, away? Right. You know, so I just wanted to know based off your experience on ships and stuff. Um, like, it's weird saying, do y'all use it? But th- my question would be, like, is that a fact? Like, is she, is, is that true? And should they just take that requirement away? Or have you seen it? used so the purpose of the bin if i'm not mistaking is really for the sewer pipes because with some sewer pipes if you you know the tampons expand so you can like clog up the system you talking about like cht you said sewer pipes but because you typically (laughs) you would flush typically you would flush them down the toilet yeah like yeah so vct yeah 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 whatever so, oh, T-shirt, whatever, some civilian whatever for they real. call on yeah. the ship, <laughs> the PVC Damn, pipes geez. that they go through and shit. PVC. So, <laughs> VCHT, whatever <laughs> it is. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> shit. Don't don't take my call away though. I'm a, I'm a <laughs> weird. I'm a weird. Um, but the, the the idea is that it can clog up. The pipes. And so if that's right, right, right. not a thing, if they won't clog up the pipes, if it's not needed, then yeah, you don't need the box because nobody's going to use it. Well, the question is, and like I said, I don't know if you know, but the question is based off our experience is that y'all just put them in like y'all, like a separate place, a separate bag and throw it out and don't use that thing. Yeah. Though I don't, yeah, I don't use it. If it's, so mm-hmm. if it's, if I see a sign that says do not flush, I will use it. Because it's right there. So don't other women put theirs in it too, though? Yeah. So you, you have used it. I have used it. If, it's, if, okay. if I go to a facility and it says, do not flush um, tampons, yeah. then I'll use the bin. But if I don't see anything okay. that says that, then I, I'm not taking... Uh, it's not leaving the stall with me. Okay. Can, yeah. can, can this can this conversation be tabled to your woman's? Uh, sure. Can you add this topic? Yeah. Don't don't tell them I brought it up. Just I won't. You know, I won't just, tell them anything. Yeah, just, I won't tell them anything. Just add it to, just, unless they heard the episode. They're gonna, they gonna be like, this is it ended weird yeah. as fuck. <laughs> but just add it to add it to um yeah add it to the conversation piece because if we don't need them, we don't need them. You know yeah. what I mean? Like if we could get rid of the shit, we could get rid of it. Yeah. Like, you know, like women have figured out how they want to do this. And now we got this weird requirement that we kind of got to adhere to that nobody cares about anyway. Yeah. So like I said, the only thing. reason why it would be needed is if the Navy is requiring it because of the pipes. If, they are, if they're saying you can't flush them, then yeah, we need them. Yeah, but they're saying that even though we can't flush them, we don't use them anyway. God, and we bullshit. still don't flush them. We, we, found, <laughs> we found another way to dispose of them without... You know, flushing them. That's pretty yeah, much. I what haven't. They I haven't found the other way. I haven't found yeah, well, how, that. Like, what, it, it, you, you probably was TAD to a ship and the only person using this thing. Like all the people, that, <laughs> like all the people that been on the ship. Like, yeah, we all use this. So you yeah, the one I person. Yeah, I have That's it. TAD. It's not <laughs> like, oh, leaving shit, the pen. stall with me. 
it's not leaving the stall with me. I'm putting it in either I'm flushing it or I'm putting it in that little box. And yeah. that's no hey, so, matter where I am. Yeah. So for the lady listeners, I don't know. I can't distinguish if taking it out the stall is crazy or not. Like, I don't know. I nothing. So let so me table know. It for the, yeah. Table it for the, uh, table it for the women's, uh, Round table, and then I can hear the thoughts on that, and we can let the Navy know if they need to get rid of these bands. <laughs> I really don't, know. you know what I'm saying? But that's, I mean, listen, we gonna we gonna tell that. you, we gonna tell the lady at the Uniform Matters office because she getting shit done. Yeah, <laughs> that's the one we need <laughs> to tell. 